Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Dunning Kruger effect, starring your favorite amazing atheist, TJ Kirk. And co starring Paul's ego with Scotty on the keyboards. Today's topic, electoralism, starring our guest host, Vosh Vidya. And now for the first dumbass take of the day, we go to TJ. Take it away, buddy. <laughs> Deep Fat Fried is the name of this podcast. Um, Vosh was on here to, uh, debate voting for Biden. I don't know why this vote keep this, this debate keeps coming up. It's absolutely fucking insane. There's like six people on earth left. I feel like, uh, that are like, dude, absolutely. You should not vote. You shouldn't vote. That, that's how you're going to fix things is just not voting. <laughs> if you vote for them. want the world to get better, you do the work between the elections and during the election, you make you make the best choice and then you get your ass back to work. You, like me, spend a lot of our time whining online. That's our jobs. But the difference between you and me is that I don't think I'm special for my abstentiousness from the process that other people have lived and died and bled for, trying to build a world comfortable enough that we could be dipshits in a computer chair. Don't be, don't be putting fucking Vosh in a way. Like, it, dude, you're you're hurting so many people on the I internet when you let Vosh spit like that. Unless I'm directly, you let that man cook like people, that. Sort of like foretelling, you know, like the, yeah. the church bell tolls. What's what's happening here? What's going so on? So I've, I've done a lot of introspection over the last couple of days because I've been I've been I've been accused of having a real bad case of the VDS. What and I, I do? think? Well, here's the thing. That's, that's I, here's the thing. I think what I actually have is so. There's also this issue. That comes up during this that you guys are going to see where I can't fucking tell who the fuck's talking because Paul's ego and the amazing atheist sound exactly the same. And then the amazing atheist turned his whole head into a goat's ball sack and like has a bad camera. So he's just constantly fucking like <laughs> if he does talk. So there's a very strong possibility that I'm going to call Paul's ego a dumb fuck. Or the amazing athe atheist, a dumb fuck during this. Maybe even Vosh. I don't think so. Though. Um, and I might be mean the other one. I don't care. I, I, there's a certain point where if you're in a bucket of dudes that all look the exact same, saying the same near shit, you don't get to be you don't get to be seen apart. All right, you gotta fucking you gotta start putting on like special fucking kill streak award uh, like glasses and stuff so I can actually tell you apart. VFDS. I've got Vosh fan base derangement syndrome, which uh, I think is a, I've got that too. That's a whole <laughs> different ball of wax, you know uh -oh. what I mean? Forty-five you know, people you in here. Thank you. Welcome to the West Side. Or something, and every show I do, the boogie doc is so sad. People reminded me of existential dread. It goes beyond my drama into the world of Realm of Swedish art you films. It is ass, fucked up. Put it on a silver platter, flipped it around, and handed it right to me. Two years later. As you so listen to this convo, I'm going to start learning how to draw it's, finally. It's, Don't forget, if you're going to learn family. how to draw, it's not even for me, okay? There's running. If you're going to try to teach yourself how to draw, always give yourself uh, give yourself a boost and join the West Side Discord where we have a visual arts board, and um, you can try to teach yourself a little bit more about uh, about how to doodle, how to doodle, understand, and how to diddle. Don't 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 learn how to, don't learn that. Don't, don't learn that thing in my Discord. Or teach anyone that, but you should share your stuff if you uh, if you have anything, and if you want to critique, always feel free to ask for, for critique. I think we're gonna add a critique board soon. So Hang around proselytizing. Didn't even give you a reason, Paul. Right. Oh, man. I'll go though. I'll go. Um, I think it boils down to the same old song and dance, honestly. To be to be to be uh, you know, to to set aside the jokes. I think it's the vote blue no matter who thing. I think it's uh the kind of making uh apologies for Biden thing. I think it's the that that kind of angle. I think is probably our sharpest disagreement. Has there been well, the anybody that's really made apologies for Biden? Behavior, but then arguing you have to vote for him anyway, right? That's like that's the that's well, the real like. I mean, there has to be a There is no way out. This subscribe. is what we live with. Uh, attitude to take towards the situation. Yeah, I don't like that either. Um, I, I I don't I don't well, like I don't the idea no, of no, uh, uh, just eternally settling for a shitty neoconservative and neoliberal clothing. I don't like that. I don't think that gets us anywhere nice. 
I think it might stave off some of the worst shit for a couple more years, but... So, like, like literally, can you tell... Amazing Atheist isn't on here. I know the Scotty guy's not talking. I can't tell if this is him or Paul's ego, except for the fact that I think the Paul's ego guy has got that same sort of, like, he, he he's, he's that same dude who just learned, like, baby leftist noises, you know? Because he, he like, went to, like, he, like, watched a few... He's like me. He watched a few Thought Slime videos and got fucking radicalized. <laughs> Um, you know, it, 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 he sounds, it, it's weird. I don't know if there's somebody going around behind the scenes, but he talks exactly the same as fucking Ethan Klein's assistant dude on the H3H3 podcast when that guy was arguing with, uh, with people badly, badly for like neo-leftist causes. We end up in the same T court. Tell me in no. chat if you guys get that same vibe for this conversation. I stand by the logic. Fundamentally, nothing is really true. If there are only two possible options, you have to go with the better of the two. Obviously, like, rhetorically speaking, I'm not exactly thrilled to be doing anything that even sounds like defending Biden right now because Whoa. of what he's doing with regards to the genocide. This in, used uh, to be the workshop's uh, transportation right. base so, close not, to Cross Central This isn't exactly Central like Station. a period of time during which I'm going Maybe to go out there and, and proselytize and wave banners around and, you know, shoot t-shirt cannons with Biden's face on it in the crowd. Not the time for that. More pr probably going to focus on tearing down the GOP, you know. But ultimately, so isn't it isn't it time now? Isn't it time now more than ever to do that though? I mean, Biden's numbers are tanking, right? Uh, yeah, he's, he's pulled up even, and and it's, a lot of polls is losing to Trump. He's losing horribly to generic Democrat, which is like one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my lifetime. <laughs> it, the polling's not good. I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people think it is because everyone who is going to vote for Trump thinks positively of him. At least most do. Whereas there are lots of people who don't very much like this Biden is a, still vote. This is an unusual election for the reason that both of these guys are a known quantity, right? And both like, are unpopular. had a, a helping of both of these dudes as president. So this is an unusual election because we've not been in a situation where we have a choice between real, I mean, America has, but like in my lifetime, never had a situation where it's like, hey, do you want this guy who was president or this guy who was just president? It's like, which one do you want a second helping of? And the fact that so many Americans are just like, hey, I'll take a second helping of Trump, please. Seems pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, there's no getting over for there's the, the sheer lack of intelligence of your average voter. I mean, that's definitely sort of an ongoing uh, problem we have to deal with. I mean, it, 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 materially speaking, like obviously, Paul's the one who's always minutes away from going into a pointless um, monologue. The, the Fair big, enough. The big stick. TJ did. I just I did recognize TJ's voice Trump right there, and it sounds a little bit more clipped. Events, which I mean, there, there's no defending that. Obviously, Trump would have done the same thing. Trump I mean, even more loud in the. Uh, there's been more sticklers, right, than just Palestine. Uh, well, that's definitely the main one. But apart from that, it's, it's presidency has definitely been better than I expected to be. Certainly not perfect, but, you know, from what you get with neoliberal candidates, he's definitely exceeded in some critical areas, mostly with regards to union stuff. And he was doing so well with that, and then we this. Yeah, I mean, uh, I did get excited uh, with his NLRB, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, protecting unions in a way that we haven't had since the 80s. Um, you know, uh, preventing uh, companies from union oh, listing before the thing was even ratified. I think that that's a huge deal. Uh, I gave him props for that, for sure. But outside of that, I find very little to crow about when it comes to the Biden presidency. You want to list off some of the wonderful things Biden has done? I mean, he's done a good number of good things, mostly because there are good things that are just sensible government. See, that, that that's sort of one of the shitty little shit heel fucking questions. That it's such, that's such a fucking hard thing to answer. You know, too, because it's so subjective of what you would think is good also. If you just get forced to, like, start naming shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, off rip, what you're going to do is, first off, the way to even accomplish my argument is that you have to name several things. Name several things is the request. And you're setting it up in a point where the second I name a thing that's not 100% everybody's guaranteed to like it, then I failed this ridiculous ask that you started with. You know what I'm saying? Then now I'm fucking now I've got a fucking back foot. And also the one thing that you can say at their after this fucking battery of questions is over is, well, you know, I, I asked you at the beginning to name these things and you haven't even named me one. That's that's the setup. That's the literal setup. And honestly, if you hear a question like that, and I'll do the same thing if I hear a fucking question like that, I'm just gonna tell them, shut the fuck up. You think I'm fucking stupid? Just absolutely flip it and get curt. Like just literally you should just immediately start getting fucking aggro about it because it's such a shitty thing to ask like what you what you're gonna fucking i have to now name things for you that are good why don't you tell me why he's fucking bad you make a fucking statement all right this isn't 20 fucking questions if you have a point to make make your fucking point and then i'll try to refute it 
but don't put the fucking onus of trying to make me think that the thing is good on, on me, right? You dumb motherfucker. What do you think this is? Third grade? Shut the fuck up. I feel like you should react like that to people more often to dissuade them from engaging in bad behavior, which that sort of question line is. It's just a shit heel question. If you talk to dumb fucks all the time, if it, it, like this is the vibe I get from this Paul's ego guy too, for like for, for real, for real. If he's butthurt about it, you can be butthurt. I don't really mind. Is that um, he's like a, uh, like I sit in the back of the comic shop and I argue with like kids kind of thing you know like i i I get fucking uh i I sit in the comic shop i argue with people about comics and i've I've definitely dominated a bunch of people that are like 12 years younger than me that don't even understand how this shit goes and and like i I, like playing into i feel smart by asking people questions that they can't immediately answer as opposed to i am smart because i actually get to the fucking bottom of things i know it's just very irritating i'm going to get irritated i might not even be able to finish this entire video i'm going to try to at least get to the coming soon part where Vosh is just like hey you're fucking doing his little he, doing his independence day speech but but it's really just a matter of whether or not he's done better. name one Scotsman that is true absolutely fucking factual what is this one slash outfit it is, it's a free outfit that they yeah, gave you all the way down in hell the math doesn't change Bosch is great, but, but also yeah, the most I mean, evil person on YouTube. Right? In the sense that he actually cares about governing in, in, a, in a way that Trump and the Paul is voting for change. So that's not real. That's good. Esmond, tell me if that's like real or not. Very baseline stuff, like you know, not like keeping the country funded and not gutting the administrative state, like really, really basic stuff like that. But the bar keeps going lower. I mean, with Project, what is it, Project 2025, the, the Republicans just openly admitting they plan on like gutting the democracy from the uh, from the administrative state once they get the chance to. In, in yeah, the face of stuff like that. Too. No. That's not new, though. I mean, they've been they've been talking about that since I was a boy. That's like their 900 page manifesto of like, like hey, uh, everything, you know. Yeah, that's the don't show up to the administrative state tomorrow. Um, you, you've been cool. Don't show up uh, manifesto that they wrote. Yeah, I mean, they, they've always threatened to do stuff like this. Bitched about the administrative state. Seems like they've been a lot more aggressive. about. Like, He's a team no sense in giving them the opportunity. TikTok to prove shop. Yellow flash knockoff. <laughs> um, I do have kind of an int- uh, a hypothetical. I do got to change his outfit. Him. I don't no, like it either. Out there, but um. Maybe it's not too crazy because uh, we've seen some polls where Ooh, I like this um, fucking weasel. Though. RFK Jr. is polling at like 22 percent in one poll. Most polls is like 10, 12 percent. So obviously you could be at that, uh, you know, you could be at 20 percent and still not get a single electoral college vote. Right. But um, I wondered if if there was a yeah. point where his candidacy became um, <sighs> like he had an actual path. Um would you then have to look at uh, this three-way race and pick the lesser of three evils, or are you still just automatically for Biden? Well, I mean, if, if RFK Jr. was better than Biden, he's not. I mean, he's he's, he's I mean, terrible. I, I think but... it's arguable because I mean, I think RFK Jr. is a crazy lunatic, anti-vaxxer, just as just as pro-Israel as the rest of them. <gasps> so he's got a lot of you know, severe issues. But there's also some stuff that I mean, he's like pretty based on. Fuck. So I don't know. Um, I'd have to kind of weigh it out. Oh, like what? What? What could he? What is probably he not Shank, but they do praise Jill Stein and Jimmy um, Dore more than anyone should. And I mean, Jimmy Dore should uh, never be praised. Page, I guess. Like he says stuff like that, but a lot of the stuff that he said. Um, Jimmy Dore's entire fucking career can be boiled down to like talking to people that don't know that they're not actually the smartest person on earth, and be like, "Did you notice thing that you haven't noticed yet?" And then they're just like, "Uh huh, uh huh," and they they start fucking like they, you know their their pants just start filling up. Oh my god! I, uh, I did notice that thing actually, though, and I was just confused about it. <laughs> Fucking goddamn it! This is the most Ann Orlando coded enemy ever. Sorry. Uh, like at rallies or when talking to people publicly, his well, wildly I mean, differed every, from his. That's every his policy. vaccine policy is going to be about the same as Trump's or worse. You, you could say the so. same about Biden too. I mean, Biden well, Biden ran on a fifteen dollar minimum wage. Biden ran on a bunch of you know uh, ending the border crisis. Those I think there's a talking points. A pretty SMEs. critical difference. Hey man, how was like, your morning? Of, it is uh, well, the middle of the night. Just, uh, RFK Jr. is now. I too Let's, take him on. Let's just say there was, a, but there's a, there's it a third party person that rises to the level where they could win. Would it then be lesser of three people? So yeah, if they had a shot at winning, I suppose. I mean, the problem is because we don't we we, we don't have ranked choice voting, so it, sure. it's insanely risky. Even if there was a really really good shot um, of trying to push a third party candidate, because obviously if a third party candidate's good enough to me that I would consider voting for them, they'd have to be left leaning, which means they'd siphon more votes from the Dems. Um, I, I feel like in the system, it's almost impossible to get an outcome like that. But I guess hypothetically, if the math worked out, that would probably be preferable to just like having the two party thing. Don't you feel like there's like a um, like a certain risk in 
creating a standard for Democrats no higher than just like be better than the opposition. Um, like long term, don't you think that produces worse and worse candidates and hurts yeah, what is the party the range on those? Well, I think the problem is that it, it really hasn't produced worse and worse candidates. We've been a two party system for centuries, effectively, with very minor exceptions. And uh, uh, the trends that dictated like better or worse governorship don't seem to be like. It doesn't seem to be just like a downward plummet. I don't. I don't actually think that like. Damn, the, I don't think the politicians are that motivated by the prospect of winning. Like non-participation doesn't seem to motivate Democrats in the ways that we want it to. If left-leaning people indicate that we're not reliable voters, they'll just move to the right to pick up more moderate voters, which is historically what they've done. When they feel like they don't have any chance of capturing the more active populist left-wing crowd, they're like, oh, okay, well, we'll never please those guys. When to be fair, we are pretty unpleasable. So we're going to try and like pull over the centrist voters, the moderate voters. Do so you get like like Clinton, for example, right? Where after um after after Reagan and and uh, Bush Senior, they're like, okay, well, you know, the the anti-war advocacy movements basically died down. The boomers are all in like middle management corporate jobs. There isn't an active, engaged left to appeal to. The Cold War is like ending, so there's not there's not even that. So like, who do we appeal to to win? And Clinton was like, oh well, we'll we'll just do Reagan's economic policies, but you know, we'll smile about it and we'll be like slightly less homophobic and racist. And well, that we know there's, a, we know there's a, a ton of like very like there are things where the America uh, the American people are not lockstep with the American left, but like there's a lot of very populist leftist economic policies that pull well that Bernie Sanders was taking advantage of during his campaigns to tremendous effect. So I think there is ways to bring people in, but it it seems to involve, you know, doing more actual stuff for people instead I'll, of just being like, hey, up. here's a little few tokenistic gestures, competent governance, but no real change. TJ, except for very incrementally. In the state you and I have lived in for a long time, we don't need to live there anymore. I mean, there was, there, it, we, we normally have a open, basically an open sort of party state. So like, basically, if you don't get 50 percent, then we go, we go from a primary, then we go to an actual election. But this was, was actually avoided this year because mm. Jeff Landry, a horrible conservative, won the state. He got over 50 percent of the vote. And wasn't okay, even competitive. So if you actually looked at the voter turnout and they were in the race, so it was 29 percent. So, I mean, the Democratic Party in this state is a f joke. They're not even really trying to run anyone credibly. I mean, this is a state they probably actually could be competitive in. And there's a lot of states like that, but they're not competitive. There's like, a red state. That's, that's a blue state. And it's like almost like neither party even gives a shit or tries. With that Louisiana governor you're talking about. Well, the soon-to-be uh, governor. Well, yeah, the, the, the governor-elect. He uh, he wants to withhold funds for New Orleans uh, water infrastructure. He does. Until women who seek abortions are prosecuted. Yep. So basically holding the infrastructure of a city hostage. Oh, he's far right. His, his far right, right social agenda is enacted against I watch his women who speech, seek abortions. And the first thing that's mentioned is God. It's like, we're doing this for God. Then family and some other stuff comes later. So yeah, that's going to be the agenda. And New Orleans, obviously, is a horribly placed city. If you don't know, it's between Lake Pontchartrain and the Mississippi River, and it's basically a giant bowl. So okay. if those, and the sewage and water problems, I mean, they have pumps, they have to pump water out of the city constantly. So withholding that infrastructure really... is going to make sure more people suffer and more people don't get adequate access to sanitation. They need. What are you guys even what talking about? What if Biden about? dies? Is how who becomes the Democratic nominee? Maybe Vosh would know this. Would that just be? Would that just fall instantly to Kamala Harris or? Yeah, I, I guess it would have to. I mean, that, I assume they've been talk talking about that behind the scenes because it's. I mean, it has to be a subject of discussion with his age. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure they. You know, and there's a bunch of people crossing oh, their fingers they can make it across the finish line oh, no, again. Just out of um, yeah, no, it's it's pretty bad there. Uh, Kamala Harris will have an even worse chance against Donald Trump than Biden by a pretty wide margin. And yeah, I agree. Um, uh, Paul was saying uh, that he thinks that uh, I would have not imagined amazing like, atheists uh, turning out this way back in the odds. This debate season. Uh, Maybe. I don't know. Not, I think he's always kind of, I, I think, unironically, the one thing I gathered from so this conversation is that TJ Kirk is kind of like still the same guy. He is, if there's, he's like the McDonald's, um, <laughs> you know, the McDonald's economic factor, like the price of McDonald's. Um, is like one of the best ways to like judge like the how like the how the economy or whatever the fuck of like an area is going or like what what, what its strength is against the dollar. I can't remember exactly, but like T.J. Kirk is literally like the center. He he's just still what he was back in the day. I don't think he's really changed much. Um, maybe like some of his like you know I might not necessarily agree with this. I think maybe some of his overall ideas have changed you know like whatever like specific things he won't do but the thought processes and the like internal core of him is like just still the same thing fuck off
of it. So I'm when he talks, it's, like, it's usually no, an easy, a good way to tell like which he's upset sure with is which way, which side has more effort uh, or is, uh, has more play kind of on the uh, dodging debates and stuff. That's that precedent. The fucking like, Overton window. I know for a fact that Joe Biden's handlers are shitting their britches about the idea of Joe Biden having to speak extemporaneously for an hour and a half like that. That's got to make people break out of the cold sweats in the Biden camp. Same goes for Trump. I mean, both of these guys are demented as fuck, off the rails as fuck, and I don't know that it's going to do them any favors to. I don't know why he's so worried about Biden speaking kind of extemporaneously. I don't, I don't so think like I be most people really speak extemporaneously you know? on stage at debates anyway. Like they just remember certain the, um, talking I think points. Right now, I think the person who's shitting their pants more is probably Trump in large part because um, he's he's declined very rapidly in the past year or so. Uh, I, I think a lot of it is just the court cases. Like, he has to keep jumping around between different courthouses in different states. Like, he's lost his business license. He's losing money. He's, he's hemorrhaging money. Um, he, the, the GOP he was giving him money to pay for legal fees, but they've stopped doing that since. Like, the actual the coffers appear of the, from the GOP were open of to days, a third time. But now that's end, closed. He die. has people flipping on him. Like, Rudy Giuliani could, couldn't even afford a bus to get home, and he's, like, potentially someone who could flip on Trump. Like, the Big Mac Index, yeah. Stress, I think I, I confused his irreverence for actual heterodox The fact that he is his age. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's just the same guy. But yeah, I think you're right. Demonic constitution. TJ is probably I going, it is going to take its toll. I, I don't even know if he's going to make it all the way. I, my money would be more on Trump dying than Biden. Because Biden, if nothing else, you know, the presidency is a stressful job. But is it more stressful than what Trump is doing right now? I actually don't know. I think with TJ, specifically, because uh, this is interesting. I've thought about this before, actually. This is fucking t tinfoil hat done. Um, I think his entire... It's not really that tinfoil hat. I think he and a lot of guys that are like him... Um, who are just like it, it's kind of like the light college education crowd, you know, the people that are a little too little too smart for high school, but also like we're never gonna be doctors. You know what I'm saying? Like you're 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 you're, you're a smart guy, you know, but you're not gonna be solving fucking problems. You know, you, you're not you're not gonna be a fucking engineer. No one's gonna be like, fuck. Well, I'm glad we had that brain around so that we could solve this like once in a fucking millennia problem. Which you know it's fine. You know everybody's not fucking the coolest baddest dude ever but that whole fucking like bunch of people i think they get surrounded by stupid fucks too much you know what i mean like true dumbasses which is you know a giant chunk of the population and so they just gain this natural aversion to just being told shit and like uh, especially being told shit that they're like i don't understand why the fuck i have to do this thing i don't understand this motherfucker right here i don't understand like why this is like a whole deal and that I've got to fucking deal with it all the time and we're being told to like you know dude this motherfucker is relentless hold on Jesus Christ like of course of course this guy damn And so he constantly gets into places, you know, and like little bits of time where he's like, fuck, man, you know, I'm not going to deal with this bullshit. I don't understand what's going on. But I think he also doesn't understand that maybe he just can't understand. It. And like, I think he attracts a lot of other people who end up uh, like understanding things or like vibing the same way. And they're like, you know, it's probably like this issue or da -da 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 -da. and then they, they, they kind of just fucking bounce off of each other and end up like solving problems that don't exist by just kind of going with the flow in a weird way you know or just being like hey all i know is that i can cast aspersions on something i don't know how to actually fucking fix it that's what we're going to hear mostly in this fucking conversation no. what percentage of americans would uh, would think that my level of intellect for real though. yeah 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 heart attack right. i don't know the, the exact hey, man, kane was a doctor yeah well, dude, a lot of 100 percent of prospective trump voters would be like yep that was the cia 100 percent and then we would have like marjorie taylor green pretending to be anti-cia for a bit the way she was anti-fbi to cover for trump um so yeah i guess that'll be fun there's not really any easy way through this right like even the best possible out Outcome still involves half the country adopting new radical conspiracy theories to explain their loss. Yeah, but you know, I am uh, one of the few reasons that I would I would say that uh, one of the few things I would think of is like, hey, this is a an interesting reason to vote for Biden. I'm gonna get fucking attacked have, right here. You know, not even clone close to deciding I want to do. But um, I was thinking about uh, the fact that maybe if the Democrats win enough elections, the the far right wingers would be like, it's so rigged, there's no point in even doing it. <laughs> you know, just totally disenfranchise the right wing. Just like, oh shit.
I think we've actually kind of been that. No I don't know the particulars about this, but neither do you, and I am more confident. I think literally every time because we've had the election. Can I cast Asperger's and the ones we just had a week ago? Asperger's. Democrats do seem to be beating polling. Yeah, yeah. Instead of aspersions, can I ask? Can I cast aspergers on some? Consistently. So Republicans are answering their phones and saying, yeah, you know, we want this, we want Republicans, yeah, blah, blah. But then when it comes to actually going out there, the whole 2020 election fiasco was basically the entire GOP screaming, our elections are rigged, nothing you do matters. And I think as a consequence of that, there are a lot of, like, boomer, you know, like, geriatric Republicans sitting at their couch thinking, like, well, what does it matter anyway? This country's going to hell in a handbasket. You know, I hope the rapture comes soon. And and they're actually f***ing themselves over a little bit, uh, which, is, which is really funny. And one of the reasons why I'm so consistent with the Biden thing, because it really shows what... Um, faltering in the electoral consistency can do for an entire party when people feel hopeless. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's there's uh, certainly a huge swath of America that is, and I, and I kind of uh, have always felt like those people, the people in the middle that don't vote uh, get maligned as lazy or non-participatory. I think there's just a lot of people that don't see a point anymore. And uh, I'm sorry to say that from an economic standpoint especially, which is really what people vote on, uh, you know, social issues are great and they can motivate voters. But I think that ultimately people vote for wallets, so weird. and Joe Biden has been horrible for American wallets. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's been horrible economically speaking. The economy has been bad, to be sure. I don't. I don't think he's done much exceptional in either direction when it comes to economic management. I mean, he the Inflation Reduction Act worked, so that was good, and you know he he significantly reduced uh, child poverty for that kind of people. The, the, the infrastructure bill. There have been like big steps he's taken forward. It seems like a, a big part of the problem is that there's not really that much infrastructure for a president to do Those much positive with the economy suck. without some kind of like transformative action that I don't expect from Biden because he's just a liberal, right? But, like conceptually, I think you, es you would have to reach really far. Oh, no. Like some some kind of insane guy, TM. race control deal or like direct really negotiation with corporations or like something like that. You know, spares. He trotted uh, Obama out there now to pimp the UBI to people. He, he spoke in favor of UBI? No, I didn't see that. Yeah, Obama, they've been quietly kind of trotting Obama out at these little events and stuff, talking talking up UBI. Automation is uh, bad. You need a UBI. He's basically doing the exact pitch that Andrew Yang was doing a few years ago before he decided he was going to do this stupid forward, forward. <laughs> forward, forward party. party. Into irrelevancy, yeah, yeah, then tank in the right. mayoral election in, in New York City. I mean, if you're going to start a third party, um, like, it should probably have, I don't know, backing, like... And supporters like ideas and it's like things you have to take positions you see, on. You see how Cornell West like announced his candidacy, went with the People's Party, which is like the Jimmy Dore brick wagon, then hopped from that to the Green Party, and then hopped from that over to being an independent in like no time oh, at all. Fuck, really I serious I stuff that. here on the uh, third yeah, party. I don't know why he's popped around so much. I saw Jill Stein's announcement video. I wasn't super impressed yeah. with that. I just put up a video about that. So this argument of mine gets paid, uh, painted as emotional, and I'll, I'll admit there is definitely an emotional component to it. I think this we'll is the part that gets irritating. Um, but. What do you say to the argument that I find it utterly unconscionable to vote for Joe Biden? Given it's what fucking stupid is. as shit. A total uh, vampire, liberal. crony capitalist, uh, destroyer of the environment, exploiter of the third world, fascist when it comes to his border policy, uh, completely and utterly feckless when it comes to his uh, foreign policy. Um, <laughs> just absolutely and utterly unconscionable. Racist, the author of the crime bill that put a generation of black men behind bars. I mean, the list goes on, right? I could continue. I mean, and and this is and this is uh, you know what I'm being. The asked crime bill thing keeps coming up all the forward. time, and it is weird because like I just you know other people looked at it, and it's like everybody voted for the crime bill. Like I remember crime stuff being like the biggest thing in the 1990s and all that shit. And it's just like this whole thing. And it keeps coming up again and again and again on, on in various different places. It's like everybody fucking voted for the goddamn crime bill. You know what I'm saying? Like well, hold on, let's see. Let's see how well, let's see who fucking voted. I just want to look. Who voted for the fucking crime bill? Why not? Let's do it. Who voted for the and crime really bill? What I feel I'm sick of hearing about Joe Biden and the Joe Biden crime bill. You know, it, it, it's a fucking congressional bill that, like, literally nobody fucking... Uh, Joe Biden crime bill. Did the 1994 crime bill cause mass incarceration? The violent... Let's see, the Brookings Institute. The Violent Crime Control and Enforcement Law Enforcement Act of 94, commonly known as the crime bill... Sponsored by Joe Biden 26 years ago, it is often blamed for extending tough-on-crime policies that overly criminalize black Americans. Is this narrative warranted? The issue is complicated, but we'll do our best to make sense of it. Although the 2020 National Convention mentioned it, it did not dwell on the more controversial parts of the crime bill since the beginning of his presidential race, however. 
Former Vice President Joe Biden has been asked repeatedly about his role in creating this bill. It came up during his vice presidential selection when Congressional Black Caucus Chair Karen Bass, who was under consideration as his running mate, responded with a shrewd history lesson. Although Bass reported that she would have opposed the bill if she had been in Congress at the time, she said, I understand very well why elected officials did what they did because the masses of the people in these communities were demanding it. Representative Bass is right. According to a 1994 Gallup survey, 58% of African Americans supported the crime bill compared to 49% of white Americans. Most black mayors who were grappling with a record wave of violent crime did so as well. As he joined a delegation of mayors lobbying Congress to black to back the bill, Baltimore Mayor Kurt L. Schmoke said, We're trying well, very well, hard to explain to Congress that this is a matter that needs bipartisan support. In a recent interview, Rep. Representative James Clyburn, a member of the House leadership and one of the most powerful African-American elected officials, reflected on the reasons for his vote in favor of the bill. Crack cocaine was a scourge in the black community, he recalled. They wanted it out of those communities, and they had gotten very tough on drugs. And that's why yours truly and other members of the Congressional Black Caucus voted for that 1994 crime bill. A Yale Law professor, James Foreman Jr., wrote in his much-cited 2017 book, Locking Up Our Own, at the height of the crack epidemic, black political and civic leaders often compared crack to the greatest evils that American African Americans had ever suffered. Writing 20 years earlier, another prominent African American scholar, Harvard Law professor, professor Randall Kennedy, argued that blacks have suffered more from being left unprotected or underprotected by law enforcement authorities than from being mistreated as suspects or defendants. Unprotected or underprotected are interesting and important choices of words to which we'll return. Give me just a second. Welcome to the West Side, God, host. Oh, Brecken's out. See you later, Jay. Take it easy, take it easy. I didn't even see that. Oh, I only have top chat on. I'm so sorry, guys. Bye, chatter. There he goes. I love lurking amongst you all, but I must go. Sorry, Jay. I'll see you around. Reception behind. 90s was when crime went down. Yeah. I'm going to bounce for a bit. I'll see you all maybe in a bit. See you later, Shep. It was against this backdrop that the CBC considered its options. The draft bill considered met, contained many provisions to which they objected, such as giving states incentives to implement mandatory minimums and preventing currently incarcerated people from obtaining Pell Grants for education. At the same time, the bill offered significant funding for crime prevention, including community policing, drug treatment, and programs for young people. It also contained the landmark Violence Against Women Act, which sharply reduced the incidence of domestic violence and a ban on assault weapons, which helped reduce the firearm homicide rate. In the end, said Maryland Representative Kwesi Mufume, the then chair of the CBC, we have put our stamp on this bill. Two-thirds of the CBC's Congressional Black Caucus members voted for its passage, as did the only black senator at the time, Illinois' Carol Mosley Carol Braun. But key CBC members voted no on the bill, including John Lewis, Maxine Waters, John Conyers, and Charles Rangel. Similarly to these CBC members in the mid-90s, Rep. Bass's comments made it clear that she thought there was another way to go. Still, she reminded us of the importance of complexity and nuance when looking at a politician's record from decades ago. Um, we don't even really need to get into the rest of this because this doesn't have anything to do with what the fuck this guy's saying. But this is just a weird point. It, it, it's such a fucking... It's one of those things that it should just stick out to you if you're a person that's been around for a little bit more... That when somebody says something that's this fucking emotionally charged sounding, he sponsored the crime bill. And you don't even know what the fucking crime bill is, that you should look it up before you start getting excited and repeating that over and over and over again. You know what I'm saying? It's hard not, It's hard to do sometimes. It's easy to get emotional, especially about fucking po- politics, and freak out for a second and be like, fuck, 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 fuck. You know, I need to, I need to know what's going on. What, what, what the fuck? What the fuck happened? But like, bro... Take it easy and read. And especially if you're going to be a person that's on the internet. I I can only assume, honestly, that these guys are are being duplicitous. You're either really fucking stupid or you're being duplicitous. It's the only two things. Because you guys, chatters, you can have these these opinions. You're fucking, you're you're chatters. God bless you. You're here to be edutained into your political leanings. You know, I respect the fuck out of that. But these dipshits got massive platforms where they're fucking talking to people about this stuff, saying it over and over and over again. To the point where someone's going to hear it, and then they'll just un- just lose control of their bowels, pants, and pissed and shitted, fucking losing their mind. Joe Bill, he sponsored the crime bill. He sponsored the crime bill in 1990. Like, he did it literally because he hates fucking black people. Just Joe Biden's like, ah, this is my moment, Jack. 
I didn't think I was going to do it, but I did it. <laughs> like, what the fuck? It's first off a bill. It's a bill. He sponsored it and helped author it. And it's a, it's a congressional bill. Like, even bringing this up is one of those things where it's like, I know you don't know that much about American politics because any bill could be anything. You have to tell me what the key provisions of the bill are, which they never even get into. Why is the bill even bad? No, he just sponsored the crime bill. <laughs> Spooky language. That's a, that's that's what I would do on this. I would that's what I would be getting TJ Kirk with. TJ, you remember George Carlin? Fucking stand up special 2001 right after 9/11 happened. That's what the religious people do. They get you with the spooky language. Spooky language. Keep it confused. Keep it keep it scared. Make sure you're doing what they want you to do. That's all it is. Yeah, was it was it the best bill in hindsight? No. But at the time it first off passed and it passed passed with bipartisan support, it was a bipartisan bill. It was, like every bill that goes through Congress, packed full of shit. The assault weapons ban that everyone loves from the 1990s was in it! <laughs> you know what I mean? It, that's how fucking American politics work. This is the thing that everyone's going to decide on. We're either going to try to force one bill through against the other side's thing, or we're going to work with them to get one that will definitely pass... That has a little bit for them, a little bit for us, and, and then we work it out together. And that's what happened. We didn't have a lot of black people in Congress. We didn't have a lot of the black people that we have today who are coming up, who are in their 20s and 30s, educated by those black people who learned all kinds of shit. Who were like, no, I would not vote for the crime bill. Why not? Because I learned from a guy who was 45 in Congress at the time that all of the reasoning that they thought about it is fucking incorrect. Like, that, that's, you, you learn, you know what I mean? You go on. A lot of the provisions in that have been fucking reduced and changed. The bill is not still in effect in a lot of ways. Some things that good happen, some things bad happen. But the thing, the point is, the whole conversation has a fuckload of more complexity to it than Joe Biden sponsored the crime bill and he sent a generation of black people to prison. Like, no, fucking local municipalities who were given the authority to fucking increase mandatory minimums and hated black people sent generations of black people to prison. An unregulated judiciary where you could just send people to prison so that they could basically become modern day slaves sent generation of black guys to prison. We all did. It was a countrywide thing of us being pieces of shit. You can't fucking blame specifically Joe Biden. I think he wished he had that kind of power, but he was not even yet president. Bill fucking Clinton was. Who was like, you know super super lefty at the time it's just it just doesn't make any fucking sense to be making arguments this stupid if you actually give a fuck about what you're saying which is why i think this guy's either unfathomably fucking stupid or being actively duplicitous like i don't even think because of the way he talks that maybe he's even smart enough to come up with this shit on his own i think that there's somebody out there handing out a dumb fuck playbook to a bunch of these dudes because they keep saying the same shit and I don't know who the fucking top-down person is that's saying it. Because it, it, the best I could guess would be fucking, like, Hassan. But even he's not saying all this same stupid shit. Even Hassan's like... Well, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't listened to him. Except for him fucking yelling at Willie Mac's show. <laughs> like is... And you can correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like people with your position are arguing against... Super predators. Like, the scariest let's, let's of all predators. A, oh, God. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the argument that we're ever going to we have... We have your permission to have bad takes. Again. 100%. And let's just vote against... He sponsored a law. I fucking hate laws. Have, Absolutely. As much as I'm painted as a doomer, I have high hopes. For I'm against cash man. bail in principle, but the practical reality so of removing it in the 2020s was so a disaster. Principles are and costly. When I'm served it's up, not, I don't know. Options, cash bail is like. Which, I think that should just go, no and we should just eat it. Happening. You just got to eat it completely and utterly disenfranchised. Because otherwise, it's just maintaining the problem. You know, it's like and morally. But hating cash bail because like there's bad things that happen is like hating that firefighters die. You know, to fight fires, like that is that is it's it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? But we need the firefighters out there, and the best thing we can do is try to alleviate what's killing the firefighters. It's not by eliminating firefighting so that firefighters stop dying. And that might sound like ridiculous, but whoa, bitch, bitch. But that that that's the kind of vibe. You know what I mean? At least I am o, I am o. I find it hard to reconcile going and doing it. 
I mean, I, I think that, like, at the end of the day, wanting good things is fine and all, but aspirations have to be tempered by an understanding of how to get there. It's like being a doctor at a triage and only having... John Henry, the real person, was imprisoned for shoplifting. The crime bill and, and throwing your hands didn't because, put you know, you're, you're black people away, more enough black people away than racism yeah. did. I, I don't... And I, does. I, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like impulses like this, though well-motivated, are ultimately designed to shut us out of power. If not by you, then like broadly in the ways they're enforced and sort of um, suggested and, and incentivized. Because by the standards you've set, we would never vote for any president, really. Maybe like, I don't know, maybe Carter first. Like there, there are some presidents maybe who wouldn't fit the specific set of parameters that you've said are unacceptable to you, and that's fine. But they're all bad. Power is bad. And as long as we shut ourselves out to the means to influence it, you know, we, we hamper our ability to make real change down the line. It seems like nothing is changing, but that's not true. Like, it feels that way sometimes because we pay attention to politics, so we're on the treadmill. But, like, little decisions, day by day, do genuinely add up. Like, with Donald Trump, oh, you know, we see how quickly things can backslide. One Republican presidency gave them three Supreme Court judges, and that just taints right. the Supreme Court for, for an entire generation. You know, trans people being banned from the military, DACA recipients being threatened to kick out of the country, Muslim ban. There's so many things that it's like, and, and those differences are meaningful. I feel like the big problem with liberals is- Oh, she's a boss? She's a whole boss? Others, how much better their ideas are. Because if you just laid out- like, She was a whole boss. Every plan or every idea they have on every I thought that was like issue, a fucking right? mini boss Republicans enemy. Want to just flat out not have trans or gay people- Power's bad, Democrats yeah. Democrats vary from being accepting to openly like promoting their existence. When it comes what to do you think? I'm, I'm sorry to No, I could have rambled forever. Please interrupt me. Uh, <laughs> with, uh, with, with, with trans people, do you not think, like, and I genuinely think this, with all of the bullshit the trans people and LGBTQ people in general get, and, and racial minorities and cultural minorities, lump them all, with the amount of shit that they get. On behalf of trans people, I would anybody. like to say. So you talked about, so, and, and I assume you mean mostly social issues have progressed. So, uh, you know, legalizing gay marriage, anti-discrimination policies have uh, uh, flourished and proliferated in my lifetime. Based. We've definitely made progress in that arena, but we've made reverse, we've regressed economically. We that are is so untrue. Economically, than we were back in the old racist, homophobic days. This is this is that's the fucking rest. point Aren't that I needed to cover. The self -same people that you're to advocate for. But how does how does letting Trump win help that? It seems like the economic downturn has been a product of a bunch of really complicated factors. It doesn't seem like there's a, could a I, correlation. It really isn't all that complicated. I mean, yes, it is. You could sit for days and write a million, a thousand page doctoral. Ooh, she's a bad bitch. On what's happened in the last forty years in the. American no, I'm gonna let him finish this really, statement because this is what pissed me off. It is something that you can put in layman's terms and be no, it's really not 100 spot on about. No, it's not. Dichotomy. There's no relationship between the no, it's not. social rights and the economic downturn. The economic downturn has been happening as a product of decades and cut you off, Wash. That's the stupidest fucking thing. This guy. Th th this should be. If you want to send a fuck, if you are, I, I would. I want to fucking bite you over this, Paul's ego. That's the stupidest shit. You could have it. That also, that's just so outing yourself as a dumb fuck that you think that you can boil down 20 years of economics in the largest economy that's ever existed on Earth to simple layman's terms. Motherfucker, people spend their entire, all of those 20 years writing 15 different books about 10 different solutions or, or ways that that fucking shit even happened. I, I, hold on, I can't even talk to you right now, lady. I gotta fuck, give me a second. This is, I gotta fuck, get, um, everybody meet me over here. All right. Cause this is, this is beyond the pale. That shit is fucking absolutely insane. The thought, the thought that you fucking could get away with saying something that stupid just shows me how dumb your own chatters are. And whoever it is, the fuck that's talking to you on the internet, you moron. First off, the, the economy hasn't, gotten worse the economy is experiencing the results of things that have been happening in the economy for 30 fucking 40 years literally since the 1980s the biggest change in our economy that to this date is all of the shit that reagan did reaganomics back in the fucking 1980s that 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 fucking blew the whole thing apart that's one of the biggest reasons that the 90s were dog shit was because people the the, the entire fucking social welfare blanket in America got ripped out from underneath people. Deregulation was rampant, but that shit doesn't happen immediately. The economy got really good, as in people started making a fuckload of money, because basically we were like, oh, the house isn't that warm enough, isn't that warm. We're going to set the fucking house on fire, then it'll get really warm. The house has been burning for three decades. Three fucking decades. And only getting hotter and shit. 
the the biggest economic factor, one of the largest economic factors affecting Americans today is the fact that in 2001, we started a 20-year war that we have been dumping billions upon billions of dollars into for 20 years. That that you wouldn't even just that you wouldn't even think that you wouldn't even think that. I'm sorry, I gave you too much fucking credit to think that you would even said that shit in your mind. That you had the fucking audacity to say something that fucking stupid is beyond me. Beyond me. I don't know who's talking to you and convincing you that you understand shit, but you don't. And not only do you not understand shit, the things that you don't understand. You are articulating out of your fucking rotten, unwashed mouth to the people of this world in a way that is unfucking acceptable. Boil down 20 years of economic policy. I can't do it. I'm smarter than you. I know because I wouldn't say something that fucking stupid. I can call up Wall Street brokers that I went to college with right now and ask them questions if I wanted to about what the fuck is going on on Wall Street. Because I first off, I just even know to ask questions. Maybe you can too, but you clearly haven't done that. That is fucking insane. And unironically, it's also fucking reactionary. This is the same shit that I hear from fucking dipshits like Jackson fucking Hinkle and, and, and the rest of these Jimmy Dore types that are like, the, and I, I know, I remember, I get even more upset about this in like 10 fucking seconds, and I'll probably end up pausing and coming over here to the personal screen again, but fucking God damn it, dude. Are you out of your mind? I don't even have really much to add to that other than like, no. It, it, first off, just no. No. And any economic policies we put in right now that are good, they aren't going to actually take effect for fucking decades. It'll be decades until we actually see the raw effects of those. The, the, the benefits of spending $15 billion on roads in America does not happen the day you spend money on the roads. The infrastructure bill does not fix the infrastructure. The workers paid by the infrastructure bill, the companies who purchase materials, the people that get on the roads 10, 15 years from now when they're actually done, they benefit from the infrastructure bill. The people 50 years from now that are still riding on the bridges and shit that actually got built correctly and don't even think about them are benefiting from that infrastructure bill. When I walk outside onto my front yard, and there's street lights shining that I can see by, that's me benefiting from economic and developmental policies that were passed in the 19 fucking 40s to put street lights on my fucking street. That you can't understand the scale of these things, and you would say that, is so beyond the fucking pale, stupid, that you should feel depths of shame that you probably aren't actual, actually capable of for having had someone catch that on camera. It is insanity that you have that courage and it should be shaken from you. You should feel stupid and scared and alone for a little bit. You should be punished for dumb thoughts like that and sharing them in public because it was stupid of you to say it. It's going to be stupid when I hear people agreeing with you and repeating it, but fuck, bro. God damn. Know your fucking place in society to a degree, right? <laughs> Any layman can understand this. No, no, they can't. It's literally too difficult. It's too difficult for actual economists to keep track of it. Micro, macroeconomics, you start j jumping into that. You just go to fucking business school for like five days, sit next to the other fucking unwashed dipshits in a fucking entrepreneurship class. And just watch all the fucking algebra you can't even fucking do. Wash through your brain, picking out little fucking lumps of stone up there that were normally fucking occupied by whatever magic cards that you fucking remembered. Are you out of your fucking mind? God damn it. I'm so sorry. I love you guys. We're going to get back to this. Uh, welcome to the West Side. Holla at your boy. I, I'm fucking, I, I'm going to get more mad. I'm telling you, I'm not getting through this entire video. I, I'm probably going to get honestly to the point where I saw it and I'll have to start skipping. But fuck! God damn. If your car didn't get swallowed by a random sinkhole, thank an infrastructure bill. Yes. And not one that was probably even passed when, when your dad was a, a voting adult. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, do you know the rivers that you see and stuff that don't flood? That's because of flood wall protection bills that were passed years and years and years and years and years ago. 
the we're not passing laws for ourselves. We are passing laws for future Americans. If we get to benefit from them to a degree, thank God. We're trying to undo. We're trying to undo the fuck-ups of our parents' generation, giving all of that control to the fucking capitalists and what say and fucking deregulators in the 1980s that has been just wholesale bad wholesale bad all of the homeless people on the streets are because of the 1980s and us shutting down free medical health care and you know fucking insane asylums or whatever oh were the insane asylums not great yeah they weren't great some of them were really bad but instead of fixing them we fucking got rid of them Instead of hiring firefighters and training firefighters better so they didn't die in fires anymore, what instead we did in the 1980s was we eliminated fire departments. Metaphorically speaking, this isn't a real thing if you're ever watching back through this. That, that's a metaphor. It's a fake thing to help you understand a real thing, which is probably even above your fucking pay grade as well. But like, goddamn, that's what we're trying to do right now. Ah! Sorry. I love you guys. We're going to go back to the game. We're going to go listen to the game now. <laughs> Beyond the Pale would be a good name for the stream or some type of segment. I know. I keep saying it. Don't worry. That's one of my things. That's one of my I know I'm neurodivergent type deals. I hyper fixate on, on, on phrases like that. And I, I'm telling you guys, in like six months, you're going to go, wait, he hasn't said that. He hasn't said that in like like two months. And you, if you ask me about it, I'll be like, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I used to say was balling. Like, dude, that's fucking balling as fuck. Like in 2006 right i used to say that shit all the time and my uncle like began to associate it with me full sale full sale like he's like that's what tyler says and then i stopped and like the next time he's like hey man what's that you gonna have some bacon that's balling ass bacon and i was like what are you talking about and he's like there is no permanence in the world and death has become a reality <laughs> the fuck this fire department keeps charging me money to put out fires let's get rid of it to save money absolutely Time to d debate the amazing, amazing atheist. I can be your trainwrecks.tv drinking gamer subs and <laughs> moderating the discussions. Absolutely. We bought it. <sighs> God bless you guys. By the way, shout out to my 38 fucking concurrent viewers in chat. That's sick, man. That's sick as fuck. Hey, six months from now, I'm saying 380. Ugh. I'd rather have more homeless than have homeless be compelled into mental institutions is the past. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard anyone say. Mo Spark, are you stupid? Why the fuck did you just say that? Or are you are you being sarcastic? Was that supposed to be a slash S thing? Uh, yeah. Oh, man, I would rather be... I, it's much better for uh, homeless people to be uh, out in the cold, freezing to death and cramped in uh, fucking mistreated situations than for them to be in at least inside <laughs> the same thing <laughs> was we're here is oh, i don't even know what that means and now it's valid to get mad when i watch vods be positive talking to family about it they get mad too i mean for real i had to this is one of the reasons i had to start this because my wife was just like i'm watching my shows i can't talk to you about this i, I can't talk to you about whatever vosh said to destiny i can't do it I'm like, fine <laughs> i'll get I'll, I'll get a real job on the internet Neurotransmissions did a video on asylums and why you should bring them back. It's an asylum. Asylum is a good thing. Asylum means safety. You know, it wasn't the the issue was not like the 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 existence of the facility. It was the mistreatment of the people in it. A lot of those asylums are still around. The Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum is still in fucking uh, Hinton, West Virginia, and it's just now a haunted house, but it's still a place that you could legitimately be putting a bunch of unwell people and treating them. Like, but they shut it down. It lost funding, so it had to shut down. So stupid. Because no one's ever going to get... You can't pay for your own mental health treatment. You know what I'm saying? That's the hardest, one of the most impossible things to pay for on earth is your own mental health treatment, especially if you have serious fucking mental health issues, particularly when you have a serious... If you have fucking untreated schizophrenia, the likelihood that you can raise money to treat your own schizophrenia is fucking impossible unless there's a gigantic, like, safety net for you to do it. 
And that's why we have so many fucking untreated schizophrenics out on the street and shit. They can't hold down a job because they can't get the dilithium or whatever the fuck they need to make the voices stop shouting so fucking much all the goddamn time. And when you have a little moment at the Kroger checkout and you scream at Gary because Gary's hovering over your right shoulder laughing again about how you know that you want to go home and scoop your eyes out with a fucking spoon, that's a little difficult for you to hold that fucking job down, much less a better job that actually has good insurance. You know what I'm saying? I, like, were you even concerned that I didn't give him a much better job in that in that fucking story than a Kroger checkout guy? No, because it's going to be even harder for him to be a fucking engineer when you're when you have to like. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm trying to talk to you, but Madeline won't shut up. Madeline will not shut up. Madeline, shut up, please, shut the fuck up, Madeline. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's fucking miserable. Those people have serious fucking issues, and we just tossed them out on the street. What? It, it, it's, it's the most fucking white guy shit you've ever heard, too. It's fu- the most white Republican wasp shit. Oh, well, if this asylum isn't too good for you, let's try the streets. That's that's what it is. That's what it is. Blah! Stunlock. All right, I'm going to fucking... I'm going to try to listen to this, and I'm going to lose and this pro spot. Corporate policies and a bunch of complicated ah. globalization stuff that we can't fully control, but only... Love you guys. Control. And then on the other the side, you have, like, the social it's benefits. Absolutely. We can get the social benefits. We just have to vote them. Like that. I would rather die than, than go on the streets stuff. again. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that you were out there, bad Diddley. With Biden. The bad economy would have happened if Trump had won in 2020. Seems it could potentially could be worse. The... Fuck. The, um... The malaise... You talked at your wife about Vosh? Oh, yeah. You know that... Just to cut this off again. You know that fucking meme of the guy with, like talking to the hot chick at the basketball game the hot chick is and he's like yeah and she's just like that's me and my wife it's me talking to her at the level and intensity that i talk to you guys about shit she does not care a lot of like thank you for telling me like i'm like am i boring you and she's like a little (laughs) she's sweet though she's nice she'll listen to me I'm super conflicted. Asylums are real horror shows, but at the same time, I see homeless every day, and it would be easier to up support of them in a system that has even a bit of care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally just... It's an asylum. <laughs> it's it's asylum. It's asylum for people that have none. That's the point. It's asylum. It's in the name. We, we eliminated asylum for the mentally unwell and the homeless. That's... <sighs> oh... Oh, man, I just fucking... I, this game just saved. And I don't know what happened. The Republican happened. Party today is not just Trump, right? I mean, it's the entire party. Uh, that's been demonstrated by the Project 2025 thing, the fact that so many Republicans were willing to back Trump's little uh, attempt to coup, um, all that stuff. So eventually these people are going to get in power, right? Well, like the Republican Party, is, maybe it won't be this time, maybe it won't be next time. I mean, historically so speaking, boss, you, you have to institute... <laughs> You have to admit you, you see the so don't we want back and forth, right? You have I to feel like we need a stronger Democratic Party to go against. Like I would think that Ooh. defeating these people less important election by election than it is to ultimately defeat them. And to ultimately defeat them, I feel like we need something stronger than the Democratic Party in its current incarnation. And I don't see how we're going to get that if the only standard we have for them is just be better than that. I like, mean, if you can be 99% Hitler, I don't see how 99% Hitler saves Is this why 99% Hitler was, like, trending the other day, by the way? It's just a stupid, it's a stupid point. This point, but I'm going to let him talk for a little another election after the Republicans put forth theirs. Like, they've made it pretty clear that they intend on dismantling the democratic system in a way that was not the case back in 2016. And also, by the way, I think 99% Hitler would definitely blood, still be better than 100% Hitler. Because I've seen 100% Hitler. Hitler. Like, they, they, they want to bypass it entirely. Before, well, we have, like, a whole subsection of our history. History books about they're openly it. admitting to it at this point. This I don't know what new, the fuck ninety nine percent. This, is, this is. is. We've had Republican well, presidents. I think that last one percent. Specific willful intent to just eradicate the democratic. Oh, you mean like when George W. Bush completely and utterly dismantled the right to privacy in this country? So no, no. Uh, so I, I don't like the false equivalencies. Okay, there are definitely anti-democratic trends that persisted throughout the elections we've had in our lifetimes before our lifetimes. This is different. If you can't see the difference, then you're muddying. You're 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 you're, you're obscuring detail. It, I, George W. Okay. Bush. George W. Bush, the Patriot Act, uh, what happened in Florida with the uh, butterfly ballots, there are things to criticize, very, very bad things to criticize, but none of them are, and you're really lacking perspective if you disagree with this, the eradication of our democracy. The the difference between America pre- and post-George Bush was, was significant, but it was not like us turning into Turk menacing. Like, it, there is a s- incredible like threat, a, a, a weapon still on the table here. And at this point, considering the fact that they seem fully willing to use it, I mean, they're shouting at the rooftops, they want to use it, 
it's not really a matter of strategy. We just can't let them win. Even if the Democratic Party remains weak, I think this chick's gonna be a two phase uh, two. Uh, ineffective, the problem hypocritical, is, inconsistent. Problem is what, oh, God damn it. Yep. Aren't we just pushing a time bomb a little further out? It, like, it further out is better than it now. Further out, a lot of <laughs> I mean, stuff could like, happen. The Republican Party could collapse in on itself. Right now, it's having massive fun. It's having massive funding issues. Uh, it's getting clearer and clearer with the past two elections, the midterms of 2023, that Republicans are doing worse on social issues than they used to. Over time, the Republican Bitch, Party might collapse. Bitch, probably just strengthening their resolve to get rid of democracy. Well, right? uh, well if they can have sure. as much resolve as they want. If they lose their elections, they can keep their resolve and take it back to the losers. But they're not going to lose forever is the problem. I mean, we've no, seen that Americans, see, you can't whatever talk. goes on, Americans seem to go Damn. back and forth. I mean, right now, even after seeing that Trump does have these ambitions. The 1% that decided to invade Americans Russia during the winter. Oh, shit. You can't shit. keep appealing to inevitability while also <laughs> saying you hope for a better future. You can't, those two things. Well, the thing is, Hitler is a Hitler that does like I, I think that if we're going to ensure that better future, we have to be more aggressive against them. And I'm appealing in what like, way? It can't just be the, the tepid messaging of Joe Biden that's like, hey, Jack, I'm going to restore democracy. And, and I'm this is just reactionary shit. The These guys are begging for a strong man. And that's the most irritating. And thing. I'm not aggressive against these. Politics. This is why this and is Hinkle shit. Dude. They just want to. They so like, OK, man, I don't, I don't want you're almost saying like helping. Hitler. I want oh, Stalin. I what you're saying you're saying like I want 99 percent elections. Hitler. What are you're begging for 99 percent Hitler even before they get into power? I think that's what you're saying. Like, so if it's inevitable that they're trying to push the country towards like a fascist state or something, a totalitarian state or whatever, that if it's too weak, they manage to stop it at the polls. I mean, like maybe, maybe you can have that. Maybe you have a weak Democratic Party, but that just gets overthrown. I don't. I, so what you're essentially arguing is like, let the fascists win because they're going to win. And I just don't think that's true. Wait, wait, you, I, no, 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 wait, please, please, please. No, 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 please, 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 please. Fundamentally, your argument is that the Democrats, so no matter what, your proposition here enables their victory. Damn. At least temporarily because either you're arguing that their victory is inevitable over the weak democratic party or that they uh we don't vote for what them we possible? vote for something else under what like under what circumstance exactly do the republicans not win ever under your scenario yeah I mean, there's no scenario in either world where they, where they don't win ever i mean yeah statistically no but that's not a fucking good answer about appealing to inevitability there's a couple of points that, that you made that i want to talk about but appealing to an i appeal to inevitability if we continue doing the zero sum dance of lesser of two evilism at the polls but it's, it's not, not a zero sum game things have gotten yeah. better and things have gotten worse the, okay the, you keep referring that's to so the stupid. state of the economy the state yes. of the economy these is are so, these are such fucking like little kid vagaries this administration we're not sacrificing I some can't. good if you just listen to this the way that you should be listening to paul's ego when he talks is just assume listen to what he's saying as though he has a little kid's voice and is not actually in a grown human man and you'll hear him saying stuff that's basically like uh, what's the odds of this happening? Oh, it's it's 50-50, because either it will or it won't. And, like, that's the extent of this guy's fucking ability to do analysis. It's really, really pathetic. Because, like, do you actually care? It's, like, the thing I keep saying over and over again. Because it feels like he doesn't. Like, because if you did, you would just learn more than the shit that you're fucking saying that's, like, insanely dumb. I, I, I'm gonna keep. All I want to do is insult. Please let me know what has Joe Biden done that has led to the current state of affairs economically. Um, uh, I mean, specifically, the, the infrastructure package was a giant giveaway to corporations. It was a compromise on the compromise. It was basically Joe Manchin's. Everything's compromised. It's a political he system, you stupid fuck. He can't. He can't. He better. can't. See, this is this is what I reject. I'm sorry. Are we compromising in a democratic system? What, do you realize the other option, if you don't do compromises and get a little bit of here, a little bit of there is you just don't do shit because it's democracy. So what these guys are going to start begging, these guys are going to start begging for in two seconds, and you'll know this because the second somebody starts saying this, the immediate next response to it is the only possible response when you start articulating the issues well, well, about um, democracy well, without knowing what the fuck democracy is subscribe. and understanding how it actually fucking works with compromise and fucking, you know, you don't always win some. Maybe you just do a little bit better each time, and sometimes you go, you do take two steps forward and one step back. Which is still progress, by the way. It's incrementalism. Yes, it's incremental. All fucking progress is incremental. Big increments, small increments. It's all incremental. Dumb motherfucker. But yeah, little kid shit. Little kid's understanding of the world. Big upset. And so he's going to start arguing for fucking uh, yeah, big man fascist politics of defeatism no 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 stop, no no this is this this it's it's nonsensical you you he can't could. just you can't just argue well, that because you can't because we're speculating that joe argue. biden is powerless in the presidency you, but donald trump will have infinite power. no no no. you can't just argue that because you don't like a thing that happened that it could have been better 
We all saw how long and grueling and painful the process was of getting literally any kind of economic reform put through Manchin with the Senate majority being what it was. We all saw, if there was some like super like Hadouken special trick that could have been pulled off there to make that better, and I'm not saying it went perfectly, but the idea that, that it was some kind of like <laughs> abstaining. Like, how about fucking showing up and being like, hey Manchin, vote our way or whatever. So, no, this yeah. is, this is like, this vote. is a very simplistic understanding of how these political processes work. Sometimes. No, it is. No, it is. No, it is. You, 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 are you, literally, you are literally saying that a good thing that happened that had to be squeezed through with the greatest amount of compromise possible. That could have um, just been done better if only Biden had just, what, threatened Manchin? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay, well, what, how about A, because the kind of people who are hardliners for Biden and his progressive policies are not the kind of people who vote for Manchin. B, P. Manchin is the only Democrat who could win this section of, uh, of, 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 of West Virginia. C, Manchin already seems to be on his way out with regards to direct collaboration with the Democratic Party. And B, it would have been optically horrible if Manchin, who would not have been threatened in his electoral vulnerability Boom. as a consequence of this, would have just come out and say he was threatened and bullied by the president into accepting is anti coal big government and that's supposed to fight that lady pussy or no that's be, maybe on twitter in real life that's yeah. not how these things happen why yeah, like this is another thing what that these guys are going to do and this is very very fucking irritating because it is a serious conversation and you're using all this emotionally charged language like you can't you can't be fucking flipping flopping back in here and not have any serious arguments and talking about like oh man well i'm really worried about these these minorities and stuff and all of these people they're getting fucked we need to be blah 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 blah, blah. and it's like oh we're just call them a pussy on fucking on, online but that's also your only argument, you know. It's not like we're trying to fucking break. We're we're, we're trying to fucking break the ice and be like, oh, we're bringing it down to a little bit of a cooler level. You're fuck the entirety of your understanding of it at the end is literally just that. That's all you want. You want a fucking. You want a left wing Trump, which is just you want fucking fascism, but you want it to work for you, which is the stupidest fucking thing you can ask for. Because guess what, motherfucker, it won't. You're unimportant. If there's a fascist government, they're gonna like me more than they'll ever like you, because I'm taller and I've got a like sh stronger fucking jaw, and you'll be put on some sort of fucking work detail because you're not rich, your dad did not fucking, or your your mom did not have the most important guy in the fucking country nutting you, so that's it, that's it. It's gonna become fucking D Day, and it's gonna suck balls for you. Don't fucking ask for that ever, because it's not gonna win. It's just constantly. I don't like this steak. I would rather starve. But then you're literally going to starve instead. You know what I mean? It's fucking dumb. Well, I don't like those two choices. I'm sorry. Well, those are the fucking two choices you got. You the, And they're the two choices you're only ever going to have. The thing to do is to try to make it so that the people that follow us don't have to live like that. Assume that you're not the only person on earth. And that maybe someday, somebody just like you is going to exist. Somebody that looks like you, that talks like you, that kind of thinks like you. They have the same general vibe. Do you want them to live in a nicer world? Down the line? They're not going to be necessarily even your kids. Just somebody. Then maybe try to fucking work for that person. That far off idea. Because it's all idealism at the fucking end. But like, god damn, man. Do something efficacious. Offer mansion. Okay, so let me let me give you an example. Non-broken kneecap. And I'm, and Mom, he's literally Hitler. Hitler. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that is my real answer. Charges against the former president, or like an ongoing genocide, <laughs> think or like the, 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 the fentanyl president. There are so many things now that are more escalated than they were before. That does seem actually pretty standard issue. I mean, other compared than the to like the Clinton charges. presidency or even the Bush presidency, things are moving so quickly these days. We're at a breaking point. We're at the cusp of a decision that this country is going to have to make about whether or not we accept imperfect democracy or fascism. And at the moment, right now, as a consequence of failures within the GOP, people are trending towards us. They're doing worse with every successive election. We can't give up now. Maybe yeah. if we drop things down a little further, maybe the Dems stay annoying, but maybe the Republicans blew that they fucking no thing up. elections if they continue to go down this crazy mag of fascism. And they have to dial things back a bit. And maybe the, the, the threat level Ooh. gets toned down, the heat gets toned Four down. And we have the room to reach it and make demands dollars. and concessions I am without the fear that our democracy can literally be broken in half with one wrong election result. I mean, wouldn't that rely on the Republican Party fundamentally becoming a different party than everyone else? It, it has in the past 20 years. It went from neocon to fascist. If it can go from neocon to fascist, I think we can break them back into being neocon. At the best. I mean, maybe, maybe. we can make better Republicans. I mean, it's happened, when, right. when, it's wait, happened so several times. Can it's more of a Democrat once the Republican, Republican Party is pushed back from fascism to neocons again. Fuck me. I mean, it would be a lot easier, I think, to do the whole, I'm going to spread the vote for a third party. Because, I, because I, I still heard all these arguments when it was still just the neocon party. It, they're still true. You should still vote for the left people, for sure. I don't think so, that it's staying There's no the time when we can actually hold the Democrats to a higher stand. You, you, can, you can't, is the thing. You you have dreams of doing this, but you can't. Life is suffering, mostly this. There's never been a point in human history where it hasn't been suffering. And they call Paul the dumber, dude. No, no, that's, no, no you, you have to find joy in it. There will always be 
the terrible Bonjour choice you have. Me. Yes. Wait, yes. he just fucking Life ate that? At no point in human history. Well, for, I don't ever please. Want to hear that I'm a doomer. For, no, I, I this isn't hear. this isn't being a doomer. This is being realistic. There has been no oh. point in human history where people have had the ever. luxury of just choosing the political option that made them happy. For most of human history, yeah. like 95% of it, and for a majority of people alive today, they don't get a choice. They and mocked a very small portion of people historically. Just, they mocked Vosh for they knew he was right. <laughs> have gotten a choice it's usually a choice between two lesser evils and by you just hand evils, fucking we will never video. have the luxury to not L, like dubs this easy electoralism he needs to be forced to work that for that final them. say that final choice how about a far lesser lesser evil if you sure for that? then do the groundwork what is the it media work, work the the advocacy to popularize those people and stop, it depends stop. on your democratic <laughs> system too because not everyone has the american sure. system bernie sanders nearly won in the primaries in both 2016 and 2020 as a consequence of a lot of work for decades to legitimize progressive perspectives politically now and he did, lost and, as, a, okay, as a direct I'm, result of the dnc being not uh, everything up and allowed to run roughshod over the will of the voters. Not everything happens perfectly and right when you want it. The difference between Bernie Sanders being a front runner contender in the primaries and what the Democratic Party was like just 20 years before that is massive. It, the, the difference that the like people are like, well, he didn't win. OK, and I'm and, and, and we're not all rich. We don't have uniforms. You know, Bernie Sanders would have been nice if he had won. But the difference between the Clinton years in terms of what was acceptable, what progressive policies could put forward, what you could say on TV. And 16 years later with Bernie Sanders, remarkable. Uh, but but when you talk over that, when you say, ah, well, he didn't win, you're, you're, you're stamping on that legacy. Real progress takes work. Thousands of people, broken bodies, blood, effort, sweat, tears, and a lot of suffering. But eventually, maybe like I said, get it. Amazing atheist beard is a is fucking profanity, All the suffering dude. before, all the work that it takes to end slavery or to legalize gay marriage. I literally can't tell if it's a joke or not. And a lot of people's misery. But when you get there, it's worth it. Union workers died to give us the weekend. Maybe yeah, we yeah, die to give 2050 a better Democrat. But we have yes. to only... work. Let's talk about workers for a second, because we've silently, in, in repayment for the blood, sweat, and tears that workers shed on the line, we've kind this. of silently, fecklessly, with a, with a just uh, insurmountably cringy shrug, shrugged off the economic degradation that's happened in this country. All of their hard-won gains in the labor space have been given back. The company town is back. The robber baron is back. The unaccountable, giant, faceless multinational is back. Fucking Gosh. virtue signal. given it all back in favor of this weak, limp-wristed, feckless, defeatist shit. What, what are you like, referring you know, to, you know, Reagan? Have, uh, what, what do you mean, what am I referring you, you, to? I'm you referring say to this Reagan weak, and every president after him. Okay, so I agree that labor rights have gone down with time. Right now, they're seeing a resurgence in large part because we have a president who's not entirely hostile to workers' rights. Because we have an umbrella of safety, Biden's presidency, union organizers, oh, cool. the people There's who work at the NLRB, the Department of Labor, they've had the ability to go out there and make changes that have meaningfully improved the lives of millions of workers with the potential yeah. to do even more down the line. And like this fucking, this, this dude is the most... This is the most like lib cuck fucking uh, virtue signally shit ever. I, I know that these guys, I, TJ used to fucking make fun of the SJW types all the fucking time, but this guy specifically has to, he just got that fucking vibe on this motherfucker. Oh, I'm gonna get my ass kicked. But like, why are you talking about the workers? Like, you're not a worker first off and you're doing them a fucking favor. What is that? Like, are you a worker or not? This is gonna be a multi phase. I got it. I'm, dude, okay. Never mind. I got it. But just as the victory of Biden has given us space for our worker victories, Trump's victory back in 2016 has given them space for their defeat because the Supreme Court has, in that same time fucking period, through a tangent. Power, they were given by Trump's presidency, waged a war against workers, ruling time and time again against their rights, their efforts, their advocacy. The difference is clear. In the systems where Democrats rule, we at least have space to speak. In the systems where Republicans rule, we don't even Absolutely have that. Absolutely The difference is meaningful. It doesn't mean we're ever going to stop fighting, but we can at least tilt the battlefield to our side. won't let me go into the shadow realm. Uh, yeah, I think that we need more than a tilt it's democrat then, life is there, republican it, you don't get it you can't keep rejecting reality in favor of an imaginary Bosch, hypothetical is suffering no exception exist. absolutely true then why even be a socialist just be a democrat because socialists are the ones who make democrats do all up on a soapbox oh he's, uh, he's, doing, he's fucking so putting crazy. forth wild ideas that are improbable at the time that slowly but surely become common wisdom and right? how do you get those ideas realized you fight literally fight. them you fight yeah, right. yes but you don't just turn your back on the entire political process bernie sanders <laughs> single-handedly hold on hold on yeah, but I'm tired of you saying that that is my position. I don't know who you're arguing against, but my position is not to say fuck it to the political process. It literally is, my though. My position is to say fuck it to the duopoly. That's the political, That's the political process. process. Fuck. <laughs> All the politics that can 
me die. No, I'm arguing the opposite. You're the one who's saying this is the venue for which you have to make your change. I'm the one who's saying your vote every four years should be simple and thoughtless. The actual work is in the advocacy you do for those elections. That's where I think change happens. That's where it does happen. You're the one who's arguing that you have to make this big grandstanding ideological defiance of the two-party duopoly at the polls. And I don't think, I mean, you can. I don't think anything good comes from it. In fact, I think it makes work harder for the people who actually do that work for the past four years. Because you don't provide them that space, that umbrella. All the people doing that NLRB work, they couldn't do it if Trump had won in 2020. They're only able to do these positive things because they were given that space. So we, we, we build the umbrella, we, we build the shield. But the real work, the difficult work, it is a lot of suffering. A lot of people spend their entire lives doing local politics in like fringe and western towns and they die without seeing any positive change. But that's the nature of politics. That's just living, right? I mean, that's, that's always how it has been. If anything, it's better now than it used to be, because it used to be the people who dare to speak up against the current regime offhandedly killed. At least now people get to live through their ineffectiveness, and sometimes... Fuck me! I, I, I think there's a lot of value to fight for here. I'm not doing more about it. I just think that in the specific venue of, like, the electoral system and the leader you choose at the end of the process, there's not that much wiggle room. In this case, because of the whole, uh, fascism thing. Yeah, um, I think that uh, we need to immediately divest ourselves from the two party system and immediately in what way come up with a better way of doing things. A third party is only ineffectual because, uh, largely because the people that whose votes would help it Fuck. believe that, oh, you know, there's no point doing this. And that kind of seems like what you're brief. I fucking got that. Like, like, let's, that not for votes well, let's, let's not waste uh, any of our time trying to create a new uh, workers' party in this country because it's just like this anyway. We're just, right. trying, we're just even just trying to push the Democratic Party left from there. They, well, that's or not even necessarily left, but just like, hey, these things you guys promise, why don't you actually Shit. try to do them? That's happening. And I let my fucking sword I mean, break. Very ineffectually, in my opinion. Yeah, be because you... You have to pay attention to the details. Recently, the White House has been flustering on its position with regards to Israel's support of the genocide going on in the Gaza Strip because they've been I mean, Reagan surprised. ended that shit with a phone call in his administration. Biden could do the same. Yeah, I'm you aware. Prop up Israel. I'm, All I'm Biden not, would have to do is be like, hey, knock that shit off, and I'm, they would stop. I'm not arguing that Biden is doing great here. I'm saying that real work is being well, done is not at about every Biden. level. This is about the complexity issue. Because I think, you say I'm oversimplifying, I think you're overcomplicating. No because way. I think that, yeah, a tire iron can do the job sometimes. The video sped up. We're at 1.25. Go to Joe Manchin and threaten his ass. No, you can't do that. Like, hey, you do. Like, what you're you this is what I heard. It's frustration. Look how quickly Joe Manchin folded, dude. Look how quickly he folded. The minute a Republican challenger rose up, Joe Manchin's like, ah, I'm not going to bother seeking re-election. And we're told, like, oh, oh you my God. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to press you. This shit. That, this, this is the, the real, like, known politics understander TJ Kirk. Absolute fucking madness. Um, if you guys don't know, I have a very strong connection to West Virginia, and it's just a bizarre thing for anybody to talk about Joe Manchin from not in there. Joe Manchin is an old school Dixie Democrat, quite literally. Um, he doesn't have a. He, he has never really been a Democrat Democrat. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't do that kind of shit. He's only done conservative type stuff his whole life. It's only in our era that we even consider that different. Like Jim Justice, who's going to be running against him, and they didn't even say this. It's fucking amazing. Um, for Senator, who's the current fucking governor right now, ran for governor as a Democrat, won as a Democrat, and then switched over to being a fucking Republican, like, while in office like shortly after election actually it's just such a dumb fucking point to make this like oh feckless oh well why can't we do something different that's not the same same thing that we've been doing like well, it's like dude nobody wants to fucking do it you know what i'm saying everybody wants to be doing something different but the same thing the, the thing that people want to be doing that is different is not the same thing like there's a lot of fucking evangelical Republicans that don't want to be doing the same thing that we're doing. They don't like the two-party duopoly either because it also gets in the way of them doing shit. Because they have to fucking... Because they're trying to get stuff done. They want fucking, you know... Goddamn, there to be no fucking abortions and for, like, black people to have to go fucking ride back on the back of the bus again and stuff. That was that was the fucking that was the boss fight. I thought that was going to be two phases for sure. You, you subscribe, you subscribe. But like it, it it gets in their way too. The two party system is just the nature of how the fucking power has gotten here. It's like saying I don't like that there's a mountain in my way, and I refuse to walk over or around it. And it's like okay, so then you have to tunnel through it. And they're like, well, why don't we just do that? 
Well, because tunneling through a mountain is really fucking hard. Not only is it difficult, sometimes it's quite literally impossible. And also, you don't have the resources or the ability to dig the tunnel through the mountain, and you're not even trying to dig the tunnel. You're whining that fucking somebody that doesn't want to dig the tunnel isn't digging the tunnel. Which is extra fucking stupid. It's like literally like 15 layers of you being a dumb fuck. I don't even know which one to deal with. You're a three-ply dipshit, right? So let's have next their name there. It's like, well, it politics understander. Name if when he's needed the most, he just says, well, so unironically, remember when this guy fucking could just do the one thing that was super easy and complain about Christianity? So simple. Hey, this shit's made up and you can't prove to me that it's real. Yeah, I can't. Fuck. Win me. Can't you go back to that, TJ? Did that fucking well run dry? Because you're stepping out of your fucking... You're stepping out of your comfort zone, man. Everybody knows that you went straight to this. In like 2008. Right out of working at a fucking gas station or whatever. I don't think you did any continuing education. You didn't try to improve yourself during that time. It's like literally, dude, your, your whole thing is like you can't answer my questions. And it's like sometimes it's because the people don't have an answer. But sometimes, man, maybe it's because you're fucking stupid. Maybe you're too dumb. Have you ever thought? I think about that all the time. Because I unironically have a lot of friends that are smarter than me. And I accept that about them. I don't harbor secret. I have, One of my friends is a literal clinical psychiatrist. She went to fucking school for like pushing 20 years to get a job that helps people all the time. She is sm so much smarter than me. Especially in those specific areas. And that does not hurt my feelings. It's great. I celebrate her being smarter than me. I don't harbor a secret, like, thought that she, like, oh, man, you know, whatever. Like, I, I, she, she's, she, I could actually do that. I could, I could stop being a, a guy that talks for a living and writes good and stuff and just become a clinical psychiatrist. I could just fucking do that, right? Ignoring 20 years of fucking... And if I started asking her questions and I didn't understand the answers to them... Like, do you think it would be appropriate for me to go like, well, then I don't really think that you have an answer if I can't get it. Like, dude, you're just fucking dumb, man. Everybody that Vosh is talking to on this panel, except for, I guess, maybe Scotty, because I don't think he said anything. You're just stupid. You're just, you just don't, you don't understand because you don't have the capacity for it. You're, you're fucking Melvin's, man. You, the, the complexities of a really intense game of magic the gathering is the height of it for you and that's fine that doesn't make you any less of a human being or any less deserving of love but you've got to understand your place in the world if you want to fucking move around in it okay if, if, if you just had it in your mind that you were 75 feet to the left of where you actually are right now do you think it would be easy for you to navigate your home and walk in and out of it? No, even that simple task would be denied you. Because you don't know where the fuck you are. You have no grounding. You guys are just, you're not smart enough for this. Give up on it. Or go back to school. Like, TJ's been making this, he's been doing this shit for what? Like 10, 15 years? Like, don't you have enough cash to fucking maybe go to community college and learn some shit? You, you can learn stuff on YouTube. You can't. But on God, if you go and get a fucking degree or something, you'll know more. I don't understand. College is blah, 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 blah. Dude, go pay somebody who's a professional teacher to teach you some shit. And you'll learn. I swear to God. You can make fun of political science majors all you want, but none of them will be making these unfathomably dipshit fucking points. It's just, they're, they're beyond the pale. God damn it. Now I'm fucking going to hear myself when I say it. Of like, incompetence. It Dunning Kruger. It's the Dunning Kruger podcast, starring fucking TJ Kurt. Welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Dunning Kruger effect, starring your favorite amazing atheist, TJ Kirk. And co-starring Paul's ego with Scotty on the keyboards. Today's topic, electoralism, starring our guest host, Vosh Vidya. And now for the first dumbass take of the day, we go to TJ. Take it away, buddy. God damn it. 
I'm sorry for that skit. <laughs> I know, motherfucker. See ya. Yeah, I'm not saying that Joe Manchin is a great ally, but what you're suggesting, I assume, is to literally like threaten him into being a better Democrat. I. It doesn't. Can I give you two no, historical no, just examples? You can't. You do way not go, you two, do not not go back 100. If you no no no. If you genuinely believe that the solution to like a gridlock in the Senate would have been the actual literal oh. threatening of someone there, you would create impeachment and presidential scandals that would blanket the remainder of the presidency and lock uh, the ineffective. I don't think you went about it right. I don't, I don't, I don't think, think you went about it right. right. Yeah. Sure well, what's the way to go about it right? In some let interesting me, ways. So what if he doesn't have any leverage? Hold on. Hold on. Let me give you two historical examples where this very tactic has been used and worked. Lincoln used it. He had a whole bunch of operatives who were paying off people left and right. Lincoln? People with investigation, promising. I'm sorry, what? Did we just fuck. Hold on, my bad, my bad, my bad. There's, there's no way. I know I just sang a whole fucking theme, did a whole opening theme song for a fucking. Because I was like, these guys are so stupid. I'm only 45 sec, 45 fucking minutes into this. Straight right. Lincoln used it. He had a whole. Has been sorry. used and worked. Lincoln used it. He had a whole. Bunch of operatives who were paying off people left and right, threatening people with investigation, promising promotions within his administration, and he managed to. He ma Lincoln. The last time you pulled this one off was Abraham Lincoln. What was going on during Abraham Lincoln's presidency? Uh, the literal largest civil rights struggle to have ever occurred in American history, the fucking Civil War. And the end of legal slavery in America. Now, I wonder if that can be applied to 2023 in any reasonable way. Because we are, on one hand, talking about pre-computer, still have slaves era America. Where we're like, wow, steam engine trains? Phenomenal technology. And 2023, where there are cameras this size of fucking pencil erasers everywhere on earth. <laughs> Everybody can see everything that's going on at all times. Managed to get slavery abolished. What do you think? Okay, well, there was a civil war there as well. What do you think you could have offered Manchin? <laughs> okay, so let me give you the second example because that's kind of the answer. LBJ. Now, I don't want anybody- That's not an answer at all. Excuses ...for the Johnson administration. He was a piece of shit. He's got the blood of Southeast Asia. Up to his elbows on his hands. You can't stop fucking. His no, who cares? But one thing you can say about LBJ. It's a fucking point. Was he knew how to strong arm a motherfucker. He got on the phone with the FBI and said, "Hey, I want you to look into, and I want you to just imagine a world where Joe Biden." I do remember this. hearing this. This guy talking. Hey, he I want you to look into Joe Man people. Manchin's uh, business. He practices. wants to do extortion. I want you to take a nice hard look. Did you where Burley said we need secret evasion. police to blackmail our political opponents? He goes, it's, "It's hiring practices." I want. You I'm telling you, I, I heard a little bit of this before, and then it's just what, once you understand, he just wants to bypass just wants to bypass democracy and do fascism but from the left that that's it th th this guy fuck dan on h3 they're doing the same thing it's fucking weird how like how often it keeps coming back it's very strange i want to go to this place okay it's not to find some illegal uh offshoring I want you to find the dirt on Mansion, okay, and then you get, and then hold on. Imagine that it's not a weak, feckless dementia patient sitting in the in the chair, but a, a f actual politician. Do you and he looks Joe Mansion in the eye, and he says, "Hey, mother, I'm gonna I'm about to bring you up on five federal tax charges. Guess guess how you're gonna vote? What is Joe Mansion gonna do? That, that's the worst possible thing, also because I would rather prefer he brings him up on the five federal tax charges. If you're gonna be using. Do you not understand, like, known politics understand or Paul's ego, so you want them to just start letting crimes happen. Do you not understand that that's, that's what you're saying? So what you would prefer is for him, because that's what you have to do. You don't, when you blackmail somebody, you don't report the crime, that's the point of the blackmail. You let them continue doing crimes. That's the point of it. So your whole thing is, well, he should use the law enforcement agencies to stop enforcing the law. <laughs> also, this is America. Um, there's already people looking into all these things. We have all sorts of shit going on right now. And the departments are so big, it's next to impossible to actually ever get away with these things. You know what I'm saying? Like, to fucking... Oh, this shit, this, this thing, there's a... Is this the lady, the red dance lady? Her shadow, there is a... 
apple. Okay. But, like, yeah, the, the, all you're going to achieve is, like, the worst possible result. Because what you're saying is, hey, we should be, we should be fucking permitting people to get away with literal crimes in order to do minor amounts of blackmail. Which is just fucking absurd, right? Like, that's, that's the stupidest thing to say. How is that going to make anything better? Also, if you start doing that consistently, like, you're going to have to do it to actually do it. You know what I mean? Like... One single guy does not legislation make. First off, if you remember, it wasn't just Joe Manchin being an obstructionist. It was Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. So, like, that's two people. So, your, 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 your thing now actually requires not just us getting Joe Manchin, a sitting U.S. senator, and blackmailing, committing felony blackmail. By the way, that's a felony offense. It's a, it's a literal crime. A crime crime. Um, to not report... A crime and then to use that crime in order to create another crime. That, that's double crime. You have to do that to him and then also you have to do it to Kirsten Cinema. But on top of that, just rewind it. We're presuming he has done something so illegal that he is going to um, go against his best interest in voting. And the thing that you brought up felony tax evasion. Uh, do you know what you can do? If you haven't been charged with felony tax evasion, immediately, the second somebody says, hey, we're going to report you for that, you pay your fucking taxes. You just go to the IRS and say, hey, you know what I just realized? I have $5 million in unpaid taxes. Um, I can't even pay that all right now. I have a million, but we noticed, my account noticed that. Can we set up a payment plan? And then the fucking IRS will say yes, because they want the money. They charge you with federal tax evasion if you make them do that. <laughs> There's other crimes, but if it's just federal fucking tax evasion and you just pay your fucking taxes, then you haven't federally evaded taxes anymore. So that's just a difficult bit of blackmail to pull off. So if it's not the thing that you think that somebody's done immediately off rip, you're going to have to assume that Joe Manchin has probably fucking murdered somebody and got away with it. You're literally trying to say the only way to proceed forward is for the fucking plot of House of Cards to be commonplace well, 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 throughout the entirety subscriber. of Washington, D.C. only for the people you need to change their votes. While setting up a system of a guy who's going to be in charge and he's the he's going to be the one that's doing blackmail but he's the good guy. The blackmail guy is going to be the good guy. We're sure on that. The dude who's going to go, "You know what I'm going to do to make some progress happen? I'm going to ignore crimes and then blackmail a sitting US senator. This dude's going to have my best interests in mind for sure. That it's just going to be fuck what? How could he not? Known politics understander, Paul's ego, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus. Known crime understander, known world understander. Say like, how much more can I get? 20 years, and, and Biden threatened me. <laughs> you, there's, there's so many things wrong with what you're suggesting here that I don't even want to go into all of them. I kind of did. Against the strong arming of people when necessary, but first of all, what you're describing, if found out, and it would be found out, because it's pretty difficult to conceive of these days, would be one of the largest presidential scandals in history. It would also give the Republicans legitimate ammunition to attack Biden, not only on impeachment grounds, but also on the idea that he doesn't actually believe in the diversity of thought within his own party, because he's willing to go after people who are supposedly moderate like Joe Manchin. This was uh, does, 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 didn't Trump, Trump, didn't Trump, Doesn't the administration kind of demonstrate that, that you can get away with a lot if you're just brazen and ballsy about it? Yes, but the difference He, he didn't get away with almost any of it. Trump has been in fucking prison for like vote forever. Biden aren't Trump voters. You can, yeah, be, well, you can get away with fascist shit when you're a fascist. Which ones? How many? No, How many, TJ? Which ones? Who? Where? What states are they in? Voters who will vote for you for being it's an electoral college system, so we need to make sure that they're in the right states. Moderate, like Joe Biden. You're, Which, you're room that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> and, that's, and that's tough. So, so fight for 50 more years, and maybe we die having seen something better. No, thanks. I'd, I'd rather have it sooner than 50. Right. That, that's because... Oh, you're, I'm you're sorry. A, uh, I'm ordering a pizza. Isn't that how you get democracy? How, yes. Not, listen. Why is this more difficult than when I fucking have my mom drink, bring a goddamn the domino The that allow us to drink clean water, unleaded gasoline. None of this happens as quickly as anyone wants it to. People have died seeing their dreams gone unachieved and then had other people of the next generation take up the cause and also fail and then continue from that point. The very first abolitionists were in the 1600s. There were people who died in the Revolutionary War on the assumption the slaves would be freed after the British 
Jewish were and I'm sure out. every here's the thing. I'm sure a lot of those abolitionists were impetuous assholes that wanted slavery done now. You're arguing so that your, your that argument would be for them to maybe give you up. Shoot for the moon to even just like get a get a like you know a, a ten pointer. You know your argument is that they point, should have divested themselves from the political term, process. Like, like they fought yeah. legislatively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. So like one thing that's very notable about abolitionists and like. Um, civil rights activists that in that era is that none of them wanted to vote in the two-party system It's actually really well known that like uh, women in the early 1900s and then you know black people as well um, in, in those areas, they just did not want to vote Th There was never any issues where they were like, oh fuck. I really wish I had a say in this system <laughs> What point are you making? What is the point? Some of those, I bet some of those those people were impetuous assholes. Like, yeah, some of them were. I mean, you know, hey, fuck John Brown, man, all day. But like, he he failed. He 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 passed on some stuff. But like, John Brown f was let down by everybody because he was a, he bit off too much, too more than more than he could chew, and he got he got fucking shot to death. You know what I'm saying? Like. That's not to say it wasn't great that he did it, but also, TJ, you're not even going out and fucking gathering up guns and friends to go fucking attack Harper's Ferry. You're just not doing shit and whining that it's not happening enough. Like, what are you doing then? Why are you talking to Vosh? Get out of here. You're, you're, you're trying to drum up support for a cause that you're not even doing anything for yet. Isn't that, like, mad as fuck? Like, don't you think that that's fucking crazy? I feel like people mistake the skeezy tax stuff the uber rich do with tax fraud or whatever. Like, they mistake them getting away with it for being easy law to get away with breaking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of, that's the thing too, is maybe some of that was illegal at some point, but a lot of the, the cheating on your taxes stuff is all in loopholes. It's like, you know, illegal, basically. Or it's so difficult to prove that you can't just prove it off rip. That's why you need to do, you need to vote for people that go for legislation for better taxes. It's not sexy. It's not the hottest shit in the world to sit down and actually fucking like open up a big manual and be like, all right, well, you know, we've noticed that the exemption for, you know, boats in a weight class of like 1.2 tons, uh, that that exemption is actually being used for personal watercraft that should be not exempt underneath this. But this exemption has not been uh, carried through because we allowed a loophole to be created where any two-prop um, personal watercraft was actually categorized as an industrial watercraft or a commercial watercraft. And unfortunately, that has, that has created issuance where uh, there's a lot of personal watercraft that are being, they're being developed with a double prop on the uh, typical single prop engine and gave there and like that's that's what it is that's what tax law it hard to hard hard for anybody to know about that i've read that shit i have sat down and read unacceptably large amounts of tax law because i had to understand it for stories i am not a tax lawyer i should even i i, I do not give advice on this kind of stuff you know what i'm saying but i just know that it exists like you guys can't even get that deep in here. we're just saying like i just wish Things are bad, and I wish they weren't bad. And because they're bad, and bad is bad, then bad things shouldn't happen. And if you say that bad things shouldn't happen, and then they do, um, I'm concerned that maybe you don't understand why bad things are happening because they don't stop happening when you notice that they're happening. Like, what, what, this is, when I clean off the layers of the additional nouns that you're fucking using, the, you, the entirety of the logic of your arguments and your disposition or your positions, it boils down to like, I kind of don't get it. And I'm upset that I can't change it, like, which is fine, but also politically inefficacious and worthless. Like, first off, your opinion's worthless. This is not even an opinion. You don't even fucking know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey man, do you want a pepperoni pizza? Oh, I don't think I'd ever want one of those. Like, oh, okay, like, why don't you like pepperoni pizza? Well, first off, I've never had pepperoni. And I do not know what a pizza is, but I definitely don't want it. Okay, well, I, I think that's a bad reason to not want a pepperoni pizza. You should at least try it. Um, thank you, but that's kind of disrespectful for my concerns about the pepperoni pizza not being good. So I'm a little insulted almost. 
that you would even suggest that this is a thing that we could do. And like, like this, is, and then you go around in circles again and again and again and again. And it's just the dumbest fucking points. God damn it. I'm taking a stand against things that are bad. I mean, quite literally. These guys, you know, I, I feel like I could have this conversation a little bit better because Vosh is being too nice because I guess he's probably friends with them. But I would just be telling him, like, you guys know you sound like fucking Family Guy right now? This is just, do you remember 2005, 2006? Uh, Family Guy, when Lois runs for office? That's what you sound like. You, you don't have any policy prescriptions. You don't have any actual specific things you want to do. But you know what you do say? 9-11. <laughs> I think 9-11 was bad. <laughs> Not doing 9-11 is good. <sighs> like their entire fucking fan base. That's it. What the fuck are these idiots talking about? Trump has been indicted three times. Yeah, first off, he didn't get away with any of it. He, he, got, he got impeached twice, which didn't go through because the, we don't have enough Democrats in the House. The Democrats wanted to fucking impeach him. They were slavering. Dick's fucking half-mast hunting in the hallways for the smell of him to impeach him. Um, if we had more Democrats in office, he would have been impeached and been out of office. So that's just... There's the response to that the first time before we got to the second impeachment. Uh, and yeah, he's, he's, he's in legal trouble throughout all of America. All of America, which is wild. So he's, been, he's being sued in multiple states for multiple millions of dollars and that's not he's not even they have to finish that they legally have agreements with the other courts to finish that before he has to go answer on criminal charges that are probably going to involve his entire family his life is ruined his legacy is is dashed to pieces on the rocks of history uh donald trump is going to be remembered as the guy who failed in every aspect he only succeeded in being elected to president against the best wishes of everybody in his party that knew what was going on because they too had lost control of things because they did not tell people like Paul Zigo that they're fucking stupid in their own party. They just went, oh, you know what? We'll give you anything you want. You want a strong man? We'll do it. Yeah, sure. Oh, fuck. He'll tell, talk about how he grabs ladies by the pussies. It's going to be a fucking party like, as long as we stay in charge. And then that guy gets in charge and you go, oh, shit. If you elect a guy who will do illegal shit and blackmail people, which Donald Trump did, he will do illegal shit and blackmail people in office, which um, doesn't work when you don't have anything to blackmail people with and when they don't give a fuck. And then he just looks like an asshole, doesn't accomplish almost literally any of his policy prescriptions. Like, Donald Trump, we're going to build a great wall. Didn't get built. We're going to fucking end ISIS. ISIS is still around. To a degree. Peace in the Middle East. I'm going to negotiate a great deal of one of the greatest negotiators still around. China's got to get... that. We've got to redo things with China. A little Winnie the Pooh bear. Still around. Still fine. Everything that was going... It literally... Fucking 2016 was a bye year. A, a bye presidency to 2020 when we started doing shit again. Constant deadlock. Constant infighting. He fired like 15 head, like secretaries of state or something. He, he, he went through six top generals. You know what I mean? The guy's entire presidency was a fucking mess. He mishandled COVID literally because he's the guy that does whatever anybody fucking wants. Like the immediate sex. I like a Domino's pizza. Who would like a Domino's pizza? I would like what? Paul, would you like a Domino's pizza? A delicious Domino's pizza. We're like, can we get it right here, right now? And like, then you just deliver it. You know what I'm saying? The, the second, instantaneous gratification. And then, like, a few years later, you're like, wow, we didn't accomplish anything. Uh, we got nothing done. The one time we could have done something, we listened to guys like Paul's ego and just fucking absolutely let COVID spread like crazy. And, and just, like, fumbled. Fumbled all of the little tiny things you could have done right to not make COVID the worst thing possible. You fumbled all of those little tiny little details. You should have closed everything down. A, a whole lot, a little bit at a time, instead you let it go on. You fucking fucked up the PPP loans. You didn't give them to all the people that needed it. You should have increased, instead of don doing the PPP loans, you should have just done some sort of fucking UBI with all that money and given Trump bucks to all the people. Given, given, but you, you listened to everybody too much and did too much fucking people pleasing and did the first thing that some dipshit like this guy would think. And then you're fucked. 
and now you have no political goodwill. Everyone fucking hates Donald Trump on, on Capitol Hill, except for like seven outspoken people who are sociopaths that nobody else likes. One of his biggest supporters is a former fucking drag queen from Brazil who lied about his name, qualifications, and like birthplace in order to graft the people of Long Island into electing him a sitting United States congressperson so that he could get out of paying different debts that he didn't realize he has to pay anyway. And then he just defrauded everything. That's one of his biggest supporters. And that guy's about to get permanently kicked out of fucking Congress and then probably go to jail in America for the rest of his fucking life or at least a good 20 years. One of his strongest supporters remaining on Capitol Hill. Joe Biden's strongest supporters are the entirety of the Democratic caucus. The entirety of the Democratic caucus is literally lockstep behind what Joe Biden says with a few notable exceptions of out of step -ness because people do still engage in politics and they fucking ask for stuff. You know what I'm saying? Joe, Joe Manchin's on his way out because he doesn't, he knows he probably won't fucking win against Jim Justice. There's no reason for him to try because he's not very well liked in West Virginia. West Virginia Democrats have never liked him, um, but he's been an incumbent forever. All the old people that vote for him regularly are dying. Um, and he presided over like 16 whatever years of the worst 16 of the worst years in, in West Virginia history, like that weren't the coal wars, the opioid crisis. Joe Manchin failed that, failed it, failed it, failed it. He can't get anything in the fucking state organized. He's the reason they have Jaeger Airport on top of a goddamn mountain that's always fucking falling off half the fucking time instead of in Tees Valley where it'll fucking work. Like it's absolutely fucking insane. He's a dog shit senator. He just happens to be Democrat because. Everyone there used to be fucking pro-labor, and they voted Democrats, but Democrats stopped doing pro-labor shit. That's the fucking argument. You won't know that. That, that level of fucking insight to a fucking local, local at a state level, uh, a federal level state politician, fucking gone. Gonzo. They'd be stunned. Stunned to find out that. If I said, if I said Jaeger Airport to TJ or fucking Paul, they'd be, what are you talking about? Like, well, you guys are talking about fucking Joe Manchin laid down. First off, he's just been a fucking senator forever. He's vastly enriched himself. They're talking about he was doing illegal drilling, illegal offshore drilling. He's in fucking West Virginia, dipshit. Coal. Say coal. Say coal. <laughs> Wrong hydrocarbon, fuck boy. God damn it. Say that his daughter... Has like an over his daughter is in fucking involved in in the prescription pill industry that's fucking ravaging West Virginia. There's a factoid for you, but you can't get that because you don't know anything about fucking politics. Like Sam Cedar's not even gonna take your call. He'd rather talk to the libertarians that are literally like huffing their own farts out of paper bags. What are you fucking mind. <laughs> what do you want to talk to today about, caller? What do you want to talk about? Um, I think that uh, Joe Manchin's kind of a pushover. For just uh, bowing out and then letting Jim Justice uh, run for run for senator in that state. You think it's weird that, that Joe Manchin's going to stop being a sitting senator? He's been doing that for a long time. He hasn't done very good at it. Um, Jim Justice, you know, he was a Democrat too. He's running for that same, that, that same spot. Jim Justice, they're basically in the same party. Same kind of guys. You really think that that's a big problem? You think that's a big problem that he's bad man? Do you know anything about West Virginia politics, their, their caller? <laughs> uh, one thing I do know is that um, when I get confused, I get upset. And I really like farting in paper bags and then breathing that in. Those are the two things that I'm pretty 100% sure on, Sam. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Well, thanks for calling, caller. Thanks for calling. All right, next we have, uh, we have, we have, next we have Steven Crowder. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was my best, that was my best fucking, um, What's his name? That was that was my best, Sam Cedar. I, I love that guy's voice. That's that's one of the hardest ones to nail down. The scratchiness of it, possible. Every time I listen to Bob's Burgers, I'm like, I fucking wish I could get that voice. I can do Bob pretty well. Linda, <laughs> what do you want, Bob? Why is Tyler doing a Sam Cedar voice again? I don't know. I think he's trying to get some credit. 
when General Chaos Mattis fucking tells you to fuck off, America should listen. Absolutely. Dude, him fa- firing James Madison and talking shit because he can't help himself really did fuck, him, fuck his image up permanently with Marines. R- literally, I, as a Marine, I can tell you. I already didn't like Donald Trump, but even some of my guys that were like hardcore Trumpists were like, I don't know about that. Like, that's weird. That's weird, right? That he would say that. He probably didn't mean it. Like, that kind of thing. Like, it, it was that reaction. Like, the first, like, if you ever go to a friend's house, if you were raised like I was, <laughs> in the kind of neighborhoods I was, where you're like at a friend's house and then you see like his dad clip him in the back of the head, like, you know, hit a kid right in front of you and you're like also eight. Like, does that happen here? Is that, I didn't realize that the reality of the world was this reality that we are currently experiencing together. <laughs> Your Linda voice is better than your Bob voice. I I know. <laughs> I love the skits, thank God. I have more respect for literally any other former drag queen from Brazil. I mean, how could you not? All drag queens from Brazil right now are just like, well, I mean, it goes without saying, Bill. <laughs> they seem like the kind of guys to call a political group the something alliance or the whatever resistance. Oh my God. Does he still get a library? Donald Trump? I don't think so. I don't think he would want a library. He would want, like, a golf course, you know? Or, like, just give me a little seat. (laughs) I want a tree planted for me, but I don't want it to be made out of wood. Wood trees are very gay. (laughs) Sorry. That came out. I could help it. You heard it here for... Donald Trump says wooden trees, they're kind of gay. They're weird, growing flowers. You can see them. I don't like it. I don't like it. Like my trees made out of good old-fashioned American concrete. <laughs> Trump could have been the best president ever, but the fact that he refused the peaceful transfer of power can't be tolerated. Destroying the foundation of society. I don't know on what earth he could have been the best president ever. He was. He didn't do anything particularly great. <laughs> he helped me out a little bit with some small business stuff, but then he fucked that up by absolutely, like, just pissing right in the fucking eyeballs of the of the middle class, like in in an insane way. So it'll reduce the overall spending power of small people. The only thing bad to ever come, the only bad thing to ever come from gender nonconformity in Brazil. I mean, for real, for real. Really letting down. Imagine being the most prominent, like being. Just imagine just being in fucking Brazil, and being like in the LGBT community there, which isn't like easy because Bolsonaro fucking really hates the gays. Bolsonaro, very, 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 like, he, he would fit right in, right in with the Connecticut whites, you know what I'm saying, with his with his dispositions, not a fan of the LGBT, and then you finally see something like, oh man, who is the most prominent gay Brazilian in America, and it's George Santos, Jorge Santos, <laughs> Bob and Linda reading Shadow of the Conqueror bit, I don't have any of it to read, I'm just trying to remember some stuff off the top of my head. So then what I did, Linda, is I went and I, I bound the light. I did light binding. You did light binding, Bob? I did light binding, but I bound it to my IQ. How'd you do that, Bob? <laughs> did it make you smarter? <laughs> I think it did, but I, then I, I remembered all of the sexual assaults that I did, and I didn't like that anymore. I, I felt really bad about it. <laughs> oh, Bobby. Call me Dalen the Conqueror from now on, please. If you don't mind. Bobby, I'm not going to call you that. Please please call me that. (laughs) Buddhist man. My wife is from Brazil and is bi and surprisingly wasn't anti-Bolsonaro. And she also hates politics. I'm going to guess that says hates politics. Now Brazilian jiu-jitsu is full chuds. Oh, yeah. Joe Rogan, I have friends or people, fans, I guess you would say, uh, of the podcast that are heavy into J- uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And even some of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys I know that are actually like even still kind of like conservative or righty. And they are pissed at Joe Rogan about getting people into jiu-jitsu. They were like, you did it too much. <laughs> you get too many fucking guys like showing up in Tesla's like, uh, I think I'm ready to roll. <laughs> Yeah, I've always just kind of wanted to understand the peace that comes from uh, grappling with another man. Fuck am I talking about? I'm so sorry. 
That's a good one. Oh, yeah, I wanted to know where the fuck this thing would be. Because I can't remember shit. So it was on Rosa Isabel Street. Maybe I'll just go all the way back to Rosa Isabel Street. There's supposed to be a shadow coming from a statue here that shines down onto the ground, and then there's an apple, and I want to get that. Vod gang, vod gang, Isham is zero. Wait, wait, you, dude, you're here. Like, this is just the you're you're. This is live. This is West Side Tyler live. Welcome back to the show. I didn't spend so much time like, walking around. Okay, so I should For the abolition of slavery for decades and decades without success. Through your argument, it would be like, oh, I've been at this for, I don't know, 10 years and it hasn't worked out. I should just give up. But it was only because I of the- I'm not, I'm not saying give up at all. I'm saying yeah, push I, as I'm hard not, as you I, fucking I, I keep, possibly can. Keep, it's the exact keep, opposite of give up. I think your position is more akin to give you up. You are literally just, letting the, way they are. the fascist win, even though his victory will make it more difficult for the actual advocates to do what they need to do to make the world a better place. How am I letting the fascists win? If you don't vote for Biden, that's one less vote for Biden. I live in Biden. California, I could vote for Mickey Mouse. It, uh, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and I live in a deep But also, the, also the, the, the more matter. important, and Josh, he should have jumped on them on this. I, I can't even listen to like more than two seconds. I can actually just turn this off. I can just turn this off. Oh, hold on, sorry. I can just turn this off. Because this is, this is, I, I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep getting stun locked. It's, it's unlistenable. It really is. It was, it's literally unlistenable. I've been talking about this for fucking two and a half hours and it is un it's unending i don't know how you fucking survived this to be honest um the that mentality is fucking stupid first off you didn't you need to vote you need to vote in your elections and you need to not be fucking like callous about overly callous i mean i am too i live in fucking i live in kentucky all right i'm not gonna pretend like it's a fucking you know, every time I vote for a fucking state level politician or a federal level politician, you know, when I voted against fucking Mitch McConnell with fucking what's her name, McCarthy something, stupid bitch, fucking running against him, I wasn't like, oh yeah, this is definitely gonna fuck, I'm definitely gonna win. But you can't literally saying, uh, I live in fucking California, my vote doesn't count, even if it's because it's blue, blue, that's defeatist dipshit that is that's defeatist because you're saying already if you don't like the dichotomy and and, and it's not going to change anything that's the defeatistism first off you're also just approaching it from specifically being a uh you know I, I only vote in like what federal level elections presidential level elections ever period is that what is that what you're fucking trying to articulate to the people of the world here that's stupid as fuck man that's dumb as shit first off that's not going to change anything because the presidential election, like, it, no one politics understands it. Presidential elections are only one aspect of American elections for a fucking reason. They are not everything. They are not the be-all and end-all of elections. They are important, and you should vote in them. But along with the presidential election that you're fucking suggesting people be, you know, abstainiousness about, or like, have some abstainiousness about, and not take fucking seriously, you have your down ballot elections. You have your elections for fucking dumb shit. Like treasurer, comptroller, city council, education fucking seats, uh, you know, at, at the state and fucking city level. All of those things are on there. And if you're fucking being defeatist, which you are, about even getting engaged in politics at this level, then, you know, you're, you're, you're going to fucking put people in a position where they're never going to see any change. Because all fucking politicians start at that level. If you don't want Joe Biden's to be president, then you don't let Joe Biden's be student council president. You don't let Joe Biden's be on city council. You don't let Joe Biden's become mayor. You don't let them become local judges. Because I'll tell you, if you actually look more than fucking five seconds into anybody's fucking political history, aside from literally the fucking Republicans, because they will elect an actor and a heartbeat so long as they're relatively sure they say the N-word in closed quarters and are faintly assured that they definitely fucking gay-bashed once or twice in their life. Fucking all of them have long, lengthy histories in politics before the federal level. That's the fucking minor leagues. They're, it's minor league voting. These are fucking feeder teams. I'll fucking explain it to it in baseball terms because maybe that'll fucking sink through to somebody. These are feeder teams. 
your local elections are feeder teams. And that is where you get the fucking future superstars of the day. That doesn't mean that every single one of your elections is going to end up in that. But guess what? The most powerful man in the Senate for the last fucking 25 fucking years started in Louisville, Kentucky. Mitch McConnell is from Kentucky, all right? This is where he got his start in politics. Being a lawyer, I can't remember his entire fucking vitae, but he is was a political figure in this fucking state for a very long time before he moved up to that level. And then when he moved up to that level of being even in the Senate and stuff, he was not immediately the House Majority Leader. He did other stuff, and then he got there. But because people fucking didn't say or didn't fight for state level elections for that guy, you didn't get the you have that dude become the most powerful guy. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, these guys start off. I think Joe fucking Biden literally was a mayor of a place. Uh, George W. Bush was the governor of Texas. Before he was the governor of Texas, he did other shit. He went to fucking law school and stuff. Jeb Bush was a governor. When you fucking, when you don't vote in your gubernatorial elections, your governor elections, then you fucking, you don't have a say in the future of the fucking state, the city, the the federal level elections. You know what I'm saying? Because they can come from anywhere. How often have you seen somebody running for president and you're like, where are they from? They're from Kansas? Yeah, it's a little known guy. His name's Bill Clinton. He was a fucking senator in Kansas. And before that, he was actually a governor in Kansas, I believe. Like, oh, okay, doesn't really matter. But now you can be all pissed off about Bill Clinton. I don't really want to vote for him for president, blah, 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 blah. And you keep going all the way down here. Who's Kamala Harris, dude? Oh, you don't like fucking Kamala Harris? Guess where she fucking is. She was the fucking attorney general of fucking California, which is not always a fucking throw up vote and which you can run people against. And if you don't fucking like her and you don't like going and voting in California fucking elections, guess what, bucko? Then you're not going to have any fucking say in vice presidential nominations. Because you're not getting involved. You choose all of the politicians. All of them. You're choosing your politicians 25 fucking years from now when you go and vote in a city council election. And when you fucking let people be, oh, I'm not immediately going to have fucking Bernie Sanders specifically come down and rub his his sweet, soft little fucking old man gray ball hair against my fucking face. Like, so I'm not going to go vote. Then guess what, dipshit? then you're not part of the electoral process. And more importantly, you're not fucking strong enough. You don't have the backing. You don't have the money. You don't have the fucking arms to do anything but the most pissant, petty, fuckboy terrorism at the most highest levels of what you can accomplish if you don't fucking vote. That's it for you. That's it. So many people did. Yeah, Vosh is right to get fucking butthurt about it because it is true. So many people in this world did lay down their lives and they did die and they did get fucking set on fire and bombed in order to fight for shit. And you are pissing in their fucking face when you don't understand the electoral process even enough to involve yourself in it. It's lazy and it's fucking spoiled. Spoiled little fucking baby shit. It disgusts me as a man and as a fucking veteran. Like, unironically, I don't mean, like using that card. It disgusts me at that fucking level to hear people comfortable saying shit like that. Because I'll tell you what, fuck, righties are voting. Righties are gonna go out there and vote like fucking crazy. That's because they get their fucking candidates. You know why I get their candidates? Because they vote. Every old white racist fuck you've ever known in your life has not missed a fucking election day at a state or local level in the last 50 years fucking years. You know why? Because they were pissed as shit when they saw that little black girl walk into that goddamn school in 1960-something, and they're still fucking mad about it, and that was Brown v. Board of Education. Not Brown v. fucking the president, the Board of Education, local Board of Education. What do fucking Republicans, what have they been trying to get on recently? What if I think? Oh, they've been trying to fucking run for Board of Education things constantly. Why? Because they want to fucking treat trans people like shit. Why aren't you getting into that? Why are you fucking waiting for Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders to come fucking save you when the whole fucking world is right here waiting? God damn, it fucking pisses me off. This is actually like, unironically, I'm actually fucking irritated as shit by this stuff. It it, it is, it's unacceptable. People that say things like this need to feel the fucking heat of scorn burning the flesh from their fucking bones i swear to in a metaphorical way because it's unacceptable the sneering confidence this fat fucking idiot with his dog shit fucking beard ah has 
to say stuff like this. You disheveled fucking rat person. You couldn't even fucking run for office. I can barely fucking stand to look at you. What, you're gonna fucking articulate the next generation of people into doing anything? No, you just wanna fucking order up communism on a fucking platter and have it delivered to you. And then you're not gonna fucking participate if you don't get what you want. Fuck you. Fuck you, the horse you rode in on and the fucking horse that's gonna die trying to carry your fat ass out of it. You piece of fucking shit. God fucking damn it. I'm- I'm Hassaning. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm Hassaning. I love you all. Usa. 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ. Not national popular vote interstate compact gains traction when the electoral vote differs from the popular vote. Absolutely. Yeah, people want the popular vote. They don't even know they want the popular vote, but they want it. And the way to get the popular vote is not to fucking ask for the president to do it, because first off, the president can't even do it. It's to make sure all the people that ever get elected, every election you can touch, that you can, that you can get your grimy little socialist fucking fingers on, you should be voting it. You should be, like, don't go out there doing chairman mouth dipshittery fucking uh, I'm gonna blah, 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 fucking losing my mind and stuff attack people any of that kind of nonsense or going out and to the streets and trying to fucking uh, you know swing people with your insane fucking like hey man look in the sixth chapter of fucking Das Kapital just fucking get out there and be like hey man you're running for office like how do you feel about the working man you know how do you feel about homeless people like, well, I'm running for, I'm running for, like, this kind of thing. But, yeah, I just want to know. Like, we got a big homeless problem. Like, if you ran for this office, but you got a bigger office after this, like, how would you feel about that? You know, like, oh, yeah, I'm fucking, I'm about this. I'm about that. Get every, get people on record early. Talk to them. You know what I'm saying? You know how much, you know how much fucking access you have to your fucking local politicians? You can go fucking bother them. It happens all the time. They get butthurt about it. Literally, just walk outside to where they are. Find your fucking mayor's office, and then you can go talk to him. You can go downtown right now. Well, not right now, but like tomorrow. And tr try to talk to your mayor. Just do it. Just try it. They have city council meetings. If you don't like the way your city's running, stuff that's happening to you in your city, go fucking go to the city council meeting. Tell somebody like, hey man, if you don't change this, I'm going to try to run against you. You know? Just like literally. You talk about like, oh, I'm going to threaten somebody by fucking doing some stupid ass shit. Come on. Uh, fucking, uh, I'm gonna find you've done some sort of offshore drilling, I don't know, Pelican Brief level fucking, uh, what, what, what's his name? The fucking John Grisham shit. I'm gonna catch you up in some sort of John Grisham, uh, conspiracy and then use that to swing the votes on one specific issue one time only, and then you're gonna hate me for the rest of my life. No, instead of that, just go fucking bug people in your local area. Hey, man. Have you guys talked to the federal government yet about trying to get these fucking, uh, trying to spend this money? Because apparently I read in the paper or online or whatever that we have like $2,000 in fucking uh, infrastructure investment loans or $2 million that we haven't spent yet. And I think that this neighborhood that my friend lives in, it's like, you know, a working class neighborhood. And it's over in a bad part of town, but they haven't had their neighbor, they haven't had their, their streets fixed in a while. And if they had their streets fixed, I think they would be able to get in and out and like do work more often and i think that would be good for the economy and i think honestly it would make you look good and that's what this money is supposed to be apportioned for so if, like if you could try to do that that would be sick you know you can do that you can just do that you could go be on their campaign you could go be a chatter to an elected official like fuck me like you give me ten dollars man that's fucking sick first off thank you i'm gonna spend that shit on like caffeine free diet dr pepper but, like, your election person might buy a little sign for it and put it up. You can go chat in their chat, and it's called a city council meeting. You can live stream it with your eyeballs by sitting in a chair there and watching it happen. And you can stir shit. You can try to get it. They'll, they'll debate. They'll fucking yell at each other. I've been there. I've caused those fights to happen by asking people um, unacceptably uh, personal questions about their finances on stage. You want to cause some real effect? Do that. Look people's shit up. Go search them up. Get on Ballopedia. Do all kinds of stuff. But don't don't cut your hair so that it looks like a goat's ball sack. 
and then fucking spend your 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 elder years on the internet losing relevance trying to convince people not to vote and in, in if you're not trying to convince people not to vote being so fucking dumb and and politically unaware that you don't realize that that's what you're doing. Don't don't be so deeply passionate about something that's that important and then have no fucking idea whatsoever about how it's how it works or what changes it or what's done. There you go. Okay, that's that's probably the end of the speech. I feel like I should go find a stargazer in the night. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out through all these fucking. I, I I do get heated. I do get heated. I don't wish fucking. I don't wish any harm on TJ, but I do get upset. I didn't mean to do that to you. You, you, you know I don't want to hurt you. TJ. Just make me you make me a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> that's actually like, kind of an evil joke. Like and 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 like